Alright, uh, what the fuck's going on here? It's not picking up- there it is. Uh, welcome back to another game of Skyfall 5 e. <laughs> No, my thing was lagging, like, Tabletop wasn't showing up. Um, I don't know if that'll pick up in stream or not. Uh, anyway, it's good to have you guys all back. Uh, how was the week? How's the day been? Excellent. Nice, nice. Well, uh, since we've got you all here, might as well recap the last session. Uh, you guys had made it back into town after having a chat with some priests who had uh, kind of escorted you from the temple. I, I refrain from using the word rescue, though they certainly helped with the digging. And uh, having brought you back, uh, you guys did a little bit of research on some things found back in the Temple of Despair and uh, talked to a couple of different folks. Eventually, uh, it was revealed that there was a uh, another temple or another point of interest that the patron god for Tij uh, really wanted to uh, go and send you to. He's worried that there's potentially something wrong and has uh, given you a like a divine mandate that you have to do this before anything else. So Tidge has convinced the group before long you guys hopped onto a ship. Uh, much to Jem's dismay, you did not take the one that he arranged for you, which was extremely affordable, I'd like to add. And uh, have now... <laughs> Illusion crying and be like, I had so much set up for the boat! <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. None. <laughs> Uh, but you guys are now on. <laughs> you're now on a uh, vessel uh, owned by Captain. Oh, I've got his name here. What is it? What Phillips? Is it? Uh, Sornigan. <laughs> Captain Sornigan. And uh, you guys yeah, have been shown your rooms and are about to either mingle around the <clears> ship or go and do something else. The day is up to you. So, as we return to you now, you're in your uh, five little stalls there in your room, the sound of waves outside the ship, and I believe that it's either early in the morning or sometime in the afternoon. What do you guys want to do? Be silent. Just like the dead <laughs> silence. <Yeah. laughs> That's the way we start every game. Yeah, it's true. Um... Maybe... Wait, okay, so I'm not sick, right? <laughs> or do I, have to, do I have to roll for that? She wasn't sure if oh. she could see, see seasick, seasick or not. I, I think we rolled for that. Um, so if you don't remember being seasick, you're probably fine. Okay. So I want to make my way somewhere that isn't in here. <laughs> so maybe the top of the deck, just to see what's going on. Get away from y'all losers. Well, I, I don't know. If I'm on a boat for the first time, <laughs> I think I'd like to see what it's like to be on a boat. Not hold away on a boat. Okay. Isn't that the whole reason we, we didn't want to be on the other boat? Because we didn't want to be in the one spot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow her up. All right. Everything's a novelty, so kind of stairs see. over here, right? Yeah. So pass into this area. There is a grab this here. Probably gonna be in a different color. Uh, there is a very large storage room, probably about this size, roughly. And there's also has to be some. little single file stairway where one goes up and one goes down on either <coughs> side here are big storage rooms and you can see easily into them because the walls have windows that let you kind of peer into the different storage compartments so on either side of the hallway past the doors you can see uh, like different crates and things like that netting that holds down barrels uh, all sorts of stuff it's like the runescape bank And none of us have our armor on, is that correct? Yeah, I think you guys left most of your stuff back in the room. Alright, well hopefully I don't get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna go up. Sure. Um, the upper deck is filled with different sailors who are wandering to and fro, and behind you, uh, the captain, uh, 
is not there. Instead, there appears to be somebody else who is at the wheel. And as you wander up, you can see that almost everybody here is a sailor except for what looks to be a pair of humans over in the corner that are dressed kind of in like merchant's attire and clearly stick out to the rest of them. They're sort yeah. of standing by one of the railings and looking out. The ship's pretty big and uh, there's plenty of space to move around. Okay. I'll probably uh, stare intently at all of the crew members. Sure. In a really awkward fashion. Okay. stare at them. How about you, Kalik? You're following up there? Yep, I'll follow her up, but I'll just watch um, as the city kind of like escapes her view. Just kind of watch what's going on. So you're staring too, just in a less creepy fashion? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, jeez. It's over there. Oh. <laughs> So there oh, I the thought that deck. said lover deck, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> but two Vs, so you know it's good. <laughs> uh, as you guys kind of stand around, you know some of the sailors occasionally give you like a, a wave if they move in proximity, but they leave you to your business. And you don't know if that's maybe because you guys are strange or they've been instructed not to, but for whatever reason, you're kind of given like a wide berth and uh, people sort of leave you to your business. Meanwhile, down in the main floor here, uh, you three are still in your little rooms, and you know, the sound of the waves comes in from outside past the window and whatnot, and uh, the other sounds can also be heard creaking of wood, and apparently some partying going on in the room just to the side of you there, Edgar. There is noise constantly coming from over here. I'm gonna be, um, just kind of sitting up in my bed with my back to this wall here mm -hmm. uh, right here and i'll just be um in my book just kind of keeping to myself with my armor next to me and my sword there too uh, you hear from past the wall somebody who goes ha ha bitch and uh there's a whole bunch of um what sounds, like, <laughs> what sounds like a bunch of dice hitting a table like you you know the sound right and uh, a bunch of others kind of call out afterwards, like, ah, as, as somebody wins a game or something like that. And I'll kind of chuckle to myself. <laughs> that kind of uh... continues on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay where I am, though. Now, Tidge and Orillo, you guys have anything you want to do? Uh, for a little while, anyways, I'll just kind of, like, meditate on the the task at hand that obviously weighing pretty heavily on my mind um uh <clears throat> and just kind of racking my brain seeing if i remember anything about if i had studied anything about the mountains of Markon, having grown up somewhat in its shadow oh, you can make a history check if you have history oh i do first roll of the night here we go boys Oh. oh, it was almost good. It's okay. All the luck uh, was used right. up it's, yesterday. Yeah, right. It's, uh, it's a 10. Okay. So, you would remember uh, some very basic stuff about the Mountains of Markon. Uh, you know they were named after uh, a famous leader in um, the Aurelian Empire, and that, you know, that you can expect all sorts of wild creatures and things like that. Nothing else, though. Uh, you don't really have okay. much for local legend or anything. Uh, okay. So you sit there and you start to kind of study and look over some things. Edgar's writing in his book. Orillo, what are you up to? I'm going to catch up on some sleep. Okay. So, well needed rest. With that happening, <clears throat> I would like to extend the offer to you, Table Talk, to do a uh, fast travel if you want. If you want to keep playing things by ear here and do stuff on the ship. Uh, do let me know. But what are you guys thinking? I don't want a full fast travel. I mean, Edgar would probably keep to himself in the morning, so that's okay. what he's doing now. But sure. uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I'm fine with taking it a little slow. 
don't have anything really going on right now, but it's okay. We can, you can cut to you wherever you want. It's fine. Yeah, I'm down for that. Okay. So we'll say that things go the way that they do here until about the evening. Edgar, what was it that you had in mind when you, you know, were done kind of spending time with yourself there in the morning? Uh, I'd probably get up, um, don my armor, okay. uh, just because i um, kind of in an unfamiliar environment here, and I, with my insight check, I do know that the ship isn't completely legit, so... Um, this is true. I'll uh, don my armor, my sword, my kind of like little <laughs> night dagger, but uh, I'm not I'm going to leave my backpack there, and um, I'll just... Um, Quietly, without really saying anything, I'll um, I'll start walking out. If anyone okay. stops, I'm sure. But uh... I'd like you to make a perception check as you enter into the main hall. <laughs> start strong. This one's always been good to me. My man. Every time. Um, uh, let's see... Uh, that's a 21. Okay. Stepping out into the main hall, <clears throat> you hear nothing from this end. And whatever it is that goes on behind that final door, which seems much more impressive than the rest, uh, is a mystery to you. However, beyond the wall of this room right here, you can hear that there's clearly some chatter going on, and it's in Dwarvish. And uh, some dwarf, uh, or sorry, somebody um, speaking dwarf is behind there, and it sounds like there's roughly about four or five people who are wrapped up in this conversation. Hmm. Now, you can also hear the sound of um, partying and whatnot continues on from this room, and this one appears to be silent, at least from your part in the hall. <laughs> Excuse me. Um... So, here's the thing. I, I know Dwarvish from uh, my time in the Second Sons. I trained with a few dwarves yeah. who um, wanted to become paladins as well. Uh, what city would they have come from, most likely? Hmm. There are two places dwarves are normally from. There's Everwatch, which is in Skyfall, a city that is mostly dwarvish, or sorry, uh, which is like kind of like a half and half between dwarves and humans. And they have a lot of ties to the Dwarven realms, but they're um, they're a lot more humanized. Like, they, they're not quite as traditional. And then you have the proper Dwarven realms over in Marenheim in their large uh, mountains. And to see any of them wandering out and about would be incredibly odd. Right, so given that I was in Soulsland and I have a, a small property outside of it with my family, Everwatch would probably be the go-to. Would make the most sense. If those are dwarves from Marenheim, from beyond that wall, then you know that's a, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. That's definitely like really strange. They, they oh, rarely goodness. ever leave their their holds. Like to see one of those dwarves outside the mountain would just be like, something's wrong. Bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred nights. Um, can I tell what they're saying? Cause I know dwarvish. Yeah, make a second perception check for me. See how well you can uh, hear past the wall. Get words really, you're on. really trying to test disco funk here. Um, we can roll a different one. I'm, I'm going to use Chitlin, because this one needs to be baptized somehow. Oh, I'm going to call it disappointment. Um, perception check, uh, plus two, that's 11. Okay. The talk uh, appears to be about... Uh, the trip, and they're speculating on how long it's going to be. Um, one of them starts off saying, I don't want to be on this boat for more than a few days, and the other one says, well, you know, you have to suck it up, princess, you'll be here for longer than that. And uh, <laughs> they seem to be um, sort of grumbling about the whole prospect of being on a boat. Cool. Okay, well, knowing dwarves, if they're in the room, I'll leave them to it. I am going to turn around and, and go to this more stately room and give a knock. Sure. When you give a tap at the door there, uh, you hear Captain Sornigan who calls out. Yeah, what is it? Got some time for a drink? Hmm. I'm going to make a luck roll. 
calls out and he says, uh, what are you drinking? Whatever you have. <laughs> he uh, he kind of comes over towards the door and opens the thing up and he looks at you and uh, he says, oh, well, what is it that you want? Look, um, just looking for some company. Seems like a fine ship. I figured uh, you might want to speak with someone that isn't a sea rat. So, you want to sit down, have a few drinks, chat? It's going to be better than the company I'm keeping right now. One drink. All right, we'll see if that turns to two. And I'll give him a, a grin, and I'll kind of walk in. Yeah, he kind of steps out to the side there, and uh, motions that you come in and join him. His room is quite large. Um, like storage containers over there, and like a nice bed, and uh, a couple of windows here and there. But the two of you eventually find yourselves over by the... Um, it's kind of like a large desk. It's two windows. Uh, Captain Sornigan turns to you and he says, Wine, hail. Wine. He uh, pours the thing for you. And after he does so, he goes, uh, Oh, good. That finishes the bottle then. And uh, you can see, sure enough, that the bottle which is poured has already been halfway worked through. And when your cup and his are poured out, things finally done kind of, you know, tucks the thing away and sits down after, you know, of course, closing the door and everything to the hall. Uh, seated there, he goes, so, what do you want to know, Edgar? Well, I'll kind of lean back in my chair and I'll try to seem as comfortable as possible here and try to turn on that charm. Um, and uh, I'll kind of just start with, uh, well, you know my first name. Let's start with yours. I don't have a first name. No shit. Nope. <laughs> and uh, how'd you come across such a ship like this? I gotta say, uh, coming from Soulsland, I've seen few vessels like this before. This one's uh, pretty breathtaking. It really depends on who's asking and why they're asking takes a sip from his glass I'll take his cue and I'll take a sip as well just a curious soul that's all well you're right it's a fine ship and I've had her for quite some time now probably spent more time here in this room than I have in any tavern what do you call her hmm? oh. the ship uh, just been running with nothing right now. And, uh, he kind of looks around the place, and you sense a kind of longing from him as he stares at the old timbers. Uh, when he turns back to you, he says, uh, when we dock, though, um, the Rizima is what I've been using. The Rizima. So we have a captain with no first name, with a ship with no name. Well ship has a name. It's just not the original. Look, Edgar, you're, uh, you're a sharp guy. I'm sure that you can tell what's going on. Uh, I'm sure that you can guess. I don't want to tell you everything. But you're probably right in whatever you're guessing. Look, there's no judgment from me. You seem like a good man. I'm sure you have your reasons. So what's your story, then? said you were, uh, something about a, a noble back on the beach, I think, you might have mentioned. I didn't, but maybe you guessed it from the way I carry myself. Certainly um, walk with, uh, you know, shoulders back and everything. Sure. Well, you know, if I'm looking for modesty from you, I guess the least I can do is give you some in turn. Truth is, um... I guess I am a noble. 
but uh, right now I'm taking some time away from family, if you know what I mean. Hmm. How's that? Let's just say we don't really see eye to eye on certain things. Don't say. And uh, that's kind of the way it goes. I mean, now I'm, uh, you know, raised family was everything. Now, here I am with a weird adopted ragtag group of people. Hmm. Doing something I'm not quite sure of. And I'll just kind of look at him and give him a kind of half smile while I finish my wine. I'd like you to roll insight, please. Sure. Also, uh, in the evening, what are you two tieflings doing? Are you just standing on the deck still staring at people weird? Uh, uh I would be, like, watching them. Tie nuts. Still watching them? Okay. <laughs> and I, I would want to stay out to, like, watch the stars. Other than that, not much. He uh, looks over at you and, uh, you know, kind of turns back towards his glass and seeing that you're starting to uh, kind of work through yours, he continues drinking. And uh, he says, well, it's, uh, it's too bad. What'd they do to have you not see eye to eye? I'll look up um, and kind of with a, I don't know, a half-hearted question, I guess. You want the truth? say so. They murdered an entire family. And I'll kind of clench my draw, my, my jaw as I put my knees, or my my elbows on my knees and forward while I look at him. I'm trying to gauge his reaction. He grits his teeth and he goes, yep. Uh, other noble family, rivals, some peasants. I kind of frown and shake my head. Doesn't matter. No one deserved it. Well, that there's some heavy stuff. <laughs> Not exactly drinking talk, but, uh, you know. Want you another one? Ship here. Hell yeah, I do. Absolutely. Yeah, he gets oh, up and... This one's on me, and I'll kind of flick over a coin, a gold coin, onto the table. Sure, you can leave that there. And, uh, he goes over and comes back, and this time he hands over to you, not wine, but uh, it's clearly hard liquor of some kind. A brown liquid with, like, you know, practically fumes coming off of it. <laughs> so that's the end of the wine. That's uh, just the good stuff left now. I'll kind of take it, give it a tap on the table, and I'll I'll down it in one shot. Jeez. Forgive me if I drink mine a bit more slowly. Oh, Jesus. He takes a sip and puts his <coughs> cup down, and he says, Well, Edgar, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, nobles can be like that sometimes. And he starts kind of nodding to himself. Yeah, what's your experience with them? Well, between you and me, and he kind of looks over. I'll give him like a one of that like a frowny nod where I'm like, "Yep, between you and me." Between you and me, Edgar, I uh working with noble family for my whole life until a little just a little while ago, actually. I'd have noticed that this uh, this here ship's pretty nice. So, I also theirs. noticed the crest on it isn't exactly one that belongs to a favored family either. But yeah, I did notice it. Nope. They used to have favor, though. Used to have favor. Thought they had some honor, too. Uh, the Lone Hells. Eventually lost their uh, head of family, and when the youngest, you know, kind of took up, wasn't exactly like his old man was, and things started to go awry. They kind of left me holding the bill for something that uh, I didn't do. He kind of so like you takes a the drink. favor. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> 
I, uh... At that point, there wasn't much I could do. <sighs> I could either go to jail or I could run. You know, I thought... If he was gonna do me like that, I'd do him like that as well. Uh, took the ship. Broke the blockade out of the bay, and sailing free ever since. I'll kind of frown and nod, or not frown, but just kind of go like, <sighs> yeah, well, gotta say, I can't say I blame you. I got an eye for these things, and uh, why you didn't strike me as a completely honest man struck me as a good one. I'm sure you had your reasons. Now that I'm out, I have to uh, make some changes, names and all. Uh, I haven't been able to operate exactly like I used to. Been a bit of a shock for me, but I'm learning. You know, got a good crew that I've put together. Picked up a lot of new faces along the way, and we get by. You know, you might have gone tit for tat with the lone owls for the ship. You had to. I can't blame you for that, but uh, you seem to, to to know that they, how can I explain that? I guess what I'm trying to say is tit for tat only works for so long. It's not always worth it in the end, you know? You suggesting I go back after him? No. You've won out. You took what was owed. That was fair. But, uh... You know, seem like the type of guy who could make this world a better place if you put your mind to it. Not trying to get holy on you. And I kind of just chuckle, but, uh... Yeah. Good, because I don't let any holy men on this ship unless they're paying customers. <laughs> yeah, just trying to... Wrecking our role in all of this, I guess. Mm. Crazy ass world we're in. Yep. Sure is. Well, look, um, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to chat. Appreciate the wine and whatever goddamn liquor I just poured down my gullet after that, but you have yourself a good evening and uh, I'm sure we'll run into each other. See you, Edgar. Yep. To nobility. And he kind of raises his glass and pounds it away. I'll, I'll kind of raise it and I'll just upend it, basically showing there's nothing in it, mm. and kind of giving a little fuck you to the toast and I'll put my glass down, <laughs> laughing and I'll, I'll walk out. He smiles and you step out beyond the door. I want to join uh, Beavis and Butthead on the deck. <laughs> sure. Hey. On the upper hey. deck, standing up there, uh, you find the two tieflings who are uh, positioned what? Are you guys by the rail of the ship, or at the front, or the back, or what? Just wherever there's space. <laughs> I mean, to not to not be in the way. Like, I don't yeah, want to be out in of the way. way. Okay. Uh, so, so, probably, like... You find that the two somewhere. tieflings are seated on a pile of crates that seems to be uh, put towards an end of the ship where there aren't many people wandering around. There's no ropes that seem to lead over there or anything. And they're just kind of you know, kicking their feet and killing time. It's the evening, so the sun is, you know, setting way off in the distance and uh, or just starting to fill the sky. I'll, uh, approach. How you is that a shark? That? I swear to God that was a shark. Ray Keelik. I don't know what a shark is, but wait, do I know what a shark is? Probably. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Roll for shark. <laughs> Roll for shark. Good evening, Edgar. Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, okay. I've never been on a ship before, so taking in all the sights, I guess. All right, look, maybe you know. I have a question for you. Is there any way to make any money on these kind of vessels sailing about the ocean? Oh, sea? absolutely. Is Question. there a risk involved? Oh, yeah. 
Well, I don't know if I could do any risky ones, but I'm talking about, like, honest labor. Or, you know, I suppose you could go with dishonest, so you pickpocket them, but I don't want oh. to be stealing. <laughs> I'll, I'll put my back to, to the railing uh, and kind of shuffle my elbows up as I lean back into it, and I'll look at her. Look, the only honest work that pays out here is backbreaking. And there's a plethora of dishonest. And that's a gradient that goes all the way down into the deep end. Well, I have to feed Calix. You see, this is my problem. <laughs> I don't have any money left, and I'm supposed to feed Calix. So... I don't see what the problem is. You had a problem, you eat too much. You agreed. <laughs> Whatever the case, I have to feed Calix. She stares at him. Uh, and then looks back at Edgar. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can come hit dice with me if you got some money left. Although I have I'm, a gold piece left. Is four I'm silver like, pieces enough? I'm likely to take it from you, if anything. Um, but in terms of money, uh, I don't know. You can uh, make promises to people about a job if we uh, hit town. You could try to pitch in some work, although the captain didn't seem too fond of that when I mentioned uh, alternative forms of payment. Um, or you could go see the captain and uh, plead your case. Right, that sounds like a better idea. I don't really want to gamble my money away, because that's not very smart. No offense, Edgar. Well, but... it's it's not smart if you lose. Yeah. Don't think ah! I'd be very good at it. See, my my friend Jem. That's not smart. Me playing him. That ended up paying out. So it's all relative, but uh, friend Calix seems smart. He's got four silver pieces. Maybe you can put that to work. Hey, I'm feeling pretty lucky. <laughs> Jem cries right. softly in the distance. I'll uh. <laughs> Hey, look, look, I'm, I'm, I'm joking, I'm jesting, but you should keep it to feed yourself, honestly. It's, uh, gambling's a vice, and, uh, it's one that I indulge in every now and then, but if you have to choose between a loaf of bread or 20 minutes of play, choose the loaf of bread. Are you speaking from experience? No, not at all. <laughs> What, do never I look really like some poor piece of trash? <laughs> <laughs> it's never really a decision I had to make, if I'm being honest. Now I'll just look up to the sky and kind of take it all in. Sure. <sighs> Is it a pretty clear, clear night? Yeah, for sure. Lots of I would, I, I would at this point like start pointing out constellations. <laughs> You know, I was out here for six months when I was 13 years old. What for? Training, obviously. Dad wanted me uh, sharp on all fronts, all battlefields, including the, the sea. I didn't think it was obvious, but now that you pointed it out, it sounds pretty, like, reasonable. Perfect pretty reasonable? Well, for that reason, I don't know if the journey was reasonable. I'm not sure what you're getting at. Never mind. Okay. I'm going to see the captain. Yeah, he's uh, he should be warmed up for you. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? We had a couple drinks. Okay. I don't think I'd be drinking with him, but alright. <laughs> oh, beautiful. He's gonna go all Sean Penn I'll, on your ass. I'll, I'll whisper to Edgar as she's leaving. She's a little dense. Oh, and you're not, eh? Unlikely. I don't think so. Unlikely, and you don't think so. Well, I'd like you to I make don't... a straight luck check, please, Kalik. <laughs> Hell falls yeah. over. Shark eats him. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 
No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Calyx says, I don't think so. And as he leans back on his crate, you just hear like a... And then the crate just breaks inwards, and he falls into it. <laughs> <laughs> His like boots are kind of hanging out of the top. I'll just kind of put a hand down, out, not even really reaching for it. I'm just kind of, I put my hand out, and I'm not moving. I'm just like, all right, come on. <laughs> Hoist myself out. It takes oh, a Jesus. moment, but he gets out. Jesus, you really are hopeless without her, aren't you? Is it really that obvious? I don't know, ask the crate below you. Yeah. Seems Look, if you're gonna be doing this with Tidge, especially under oath, you're gonna have to learn to take care of yourself. Books aren't enough out here, I'll be honest. I understand. No, um, you don't. I guess I don't, but not doing it for me. It'll either grow on you or it won't. But, uh... Look, you... You can tell in a man whether survival... Not to use a word my brother would use, but primordial to their existence. You don't seem like someone too concerned with surviving because it's never something that's been questioned. You learn, you read... Everything is theoretical. We're happening to someone else. You gotta start worrying about you. Otherwise, you're gonna you... end up with them out there. And I'll just gesture to the water. I suppose there's some truth to that. I, uh... Yeah, you know what? Never mind. And I'll, uh... Just kind of like look out towards the sea, towards where he's pointing, just okay. looking very serious. Meanwhile, down on the uh, the main deck here, you step down the stairs. There's another one that goes further down into the, uh, the bowels of the ship, but uh, in front of you is the hallway that leads towards your room and all the other rooms, including the captains at the very end. Now as you step down a bit, one of the doors here opens, and you see uh, right here, uh, Annabelle, this door opens, and... Mm -hmm two humans step out, and it seems to be a, a couple. Um, there's a guy and gal there. Uh, both of them look like they're adults wearing fine clothes, maybe not noble quality, but, you know, close. And uh, as they do, like, a cloud of smoke exits from the room. And uh, they're giggling to themselves, and uh, that girl who's in his arms kind of turns to him, and she's like, My halfling's a cheating cocksucker, I swear! And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> Seven gold a night. How many more days are we gonna be on the sea? And they kind of open the door to the uh, the next uh, area here and step in, and the door closes and uh, they disappear. Okay, that was odd. <laughs> Moving in closer to the captain's chambers. <laughs> okay, you eventually get to the final door here. Uh. Arillo and Titch, are you guys still studying slash sleeping? I would... I think I'd be growing a little restless at this point. I only sit in a room for so long. Yeah, and then I'll... I'll start, like, exploring around a little bit. When you open the door, you find that the hallway smells like smoke and tobacco. And, uh, there, right by the door, Annabelle is, uh, kind of walking down the hall. And, uh, this door opens here as Titch comes through. Also, Arillo, what are you up to? Still sleeping. I'm a heavy sleeper. Okay, so you're sound asleep. <laughs> Just like 24 hours. <laughs> uh, Annabelle, you hear the door open behind you. Once again, <clears throat> it's not the party room at the end of the hall, but instead your room, and Tidge is there. Oh, evening, Annabelle. Good evening, Tidge. What's going on? Anything exciting up on the deck? Not really. No. I've just been sitting around doing nothing. Watching can't, the crew work. Can't say came, I've done much more interesting. Yeah, I came down here to probably find work, hopefully. Just ask the captain, I guess. Doesn't hurt to ask, does it? I don't think so. You're a little low on funds, aren't you? I am incredibly low on funds. 
Well, why didn't you come with me? Maybe, maybe we can find something together. Calix's not much for working. He's rather stick his nose in a book. You know, I kind of get that impression Bark as well. Rate. I can give you a hand. See if I can. <laughs> see if we can squeeze talk him a bit. Growing a bit restless, to be honest. Sounds like a plan to me. To me. <laughs> Who knocks? All right. What do you guys do? Oh, I knock. Okay. You tap on the door and hear Captain Sornigan's voice as he calls out and he goes, Hey, what is it? Good evening, Captain. I was wondering if I could come in and speak with you a little bit. Oh, um... <clears throat> there's like a few <laughs> footsteps and eventually the door opens. Ah, um... Annabelle and, uh... Oh, uh, Titch. Uh, hello. Good evening, Captain. What can I do for you two? See, I was wondering, uh, I spoke with Edgar up on deck, and he said that you might not be too keen on the idea, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, I was wondering if there's any way I could find work on your vessel. You see, um, after paying your fare, I'm a little, a, a wee bit low on funds. And I was just wondering if I could make any sort of amount back while I'm here? Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> he he kind of looks at you for a moment, and then he looks over at Tidge. Tidge, do you say anything when he looks at you? How does he look at me? <laughs> Insight, <laughs> <he> like... please. <laughs> <laughs> what is this little shrimp gonna do? Uh... That would be a 19. <laughs> he looks at you with an awkward look. Odd. You hardly know me. Don't be sizing me up like that. No, no, it's, uh... Um... <clears throat> I'm no stranger to the look. I'm quite useful. I'm no stranger to hard... To hard la- or to... Yeah, hard labor either. Uh, does he roll that way? So, <laughs> <laughs> can we not propose an Eiffel Tower on the ship right now? <laughs> he, he seems kind of like, like he's he's stuck almost. And as he looks back to you, he just repeatedly is like, "Hmm." Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'll make a check for the captain here. Oh no! It wasn't dirty till you made it dirty. And uh, he says, uh, well, um, I'm not, uh, so much for, um, you know, the s smaller help, but I, uh, I, I do appreciate the offer. Oh, oh, that's not cool, man. No, it's, it's just <laughs> preference. I don't mean to. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't mean any offense. I'm I'm happy to have you on the ship and everything. I simply don't. You know, it's never really been my thing. Oh, I see. So, so you mean to have like non-crew members do a little extra work? It's uh, or, well, for some you know, of them, just, I'd be okay with the whole thing. Just say yes, and we'll we'll move on from this, and we'll pretend like I understood completely. Uh, I don't know if I... I don't... I, I don't need any help, actually. Uh, you you okay. both have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, like, turns and closes the door. Mega awkward. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, Annabelle, I'm not sure that I was much help at all. <laughs> I don't know what went on or why you got so awkward all of a sudden, but... What do you mean, awkward? I don't know. He slammed the door on our faces. Hardly said goodbye. Said, that's... no, I don't have any work, and then he just left. I suppose that's a bit awkward. So now what? I want to be talking loud enough so he <laughs> can't possibly hear me. <laughs> oh, I'm going to make a perception check for him. Okay, continue. 
You guys are still standing by the door chit-chatting. You know, he said that it wasn't, it was a sm just the way he said small workers or something like that. It just rubbed me the wrong way, you know. Hey. It's like he wanted to make it sound like he meant one thing, but it really, like, <laughs> I, I saw the look in his eye and I knew exactly what he meant. You know? And, well, I guess right, you probably know. Right. Yeah. No, I'm a woman and well, I'm that's... not very strong. <laughs> so it's probably the same. I'll be talking just as loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Have you seen that that fucking clip from uh, what is it like Sherlock when he's staring at all the equations and everything going by? <laughs> the captain's just drunk like that right now. <laughs> so it's like you're you're always looked down on, like literally, but also figuratively. And so, and and it can't be like like we're cool, but. Like, the whole appearance thing probably can't be much of a help. Like, you know, the infernal... The assumptions that come along with that. Right, like I'm a demon or something? Yeah. But, you know, if they took like two seconds to get to know us, they'd be I like, oh, that's I... well, folks. Hey, I don't think I'd hurt a fly, right, Fergus? <laughs> she scratches Fergus. <laughs> Your rat sits there, equally as confused. <laughs> you want, okay, you just, kids. You hear what sounds like a cork being popped from a bottle from past the door. <laughs> <laughs> now he's drinking. I think we would drove him to drink, kids. I don't know what kind of question that was, but wait, it must have been could, awkward. This could be good. We just wait here for a little longer. There's a few steps <laughs> and, a and the door more. opens. <laughs> And See? Cap Captain Sword and Gun is there, and he has in his hand, you know, he's holding a bottle and the cork in one hand, and in the other he's got a glass. He just says, Are you gonna talk by my door all evening? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we talking a bit loud? I'm gonna keep talking yes. in the same volume. <laughs> I'm sorry! This is my normal speaking voice. This is how I speak. <laughs> See that? You're coming out with... Nope, nope, we're not gonna go that way, I guess. Actually, better not insult the captain. Um, Are you two... Most off the ship. In, in Edgar's employ, is that what this is? Edgar? Not good. No. You think he could run a crew? He could be a right cunt sometimes. <laughs> that's, just, that's for sure. No, yeah, he gives you a nod person. and he starts to pour into his cup and he goes, go on, go on. Do you have another one of those? <laughs> well, fuck, if everybody's just coming. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, you know, kind of flails his like hands up like a little bit of liquor pops out of the bottle and the cup at the same time and just kind of goes over to the desk. He's gonna skip in. <laughs> He just he nice forgets you... about the door and leaves it open, and you guys... <laughs> to invite us in. <laughs> ...are kind of seated around the table there, and, uh, you know, he kind of pours you guys some drinks. And, uh, it's very hard liquor, um, that you're handed, and, uh, tastes little like anything other than, um, just like sugar. Rubbing right? alcohol. It's like, it's like sugar cane and rubbing alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, fuck. You enjoying the, your time on the ship, then? It's very interesting. I'm surprised How I'm not sick. How is it interesting? I've never been on a ship before. Mm. And you? I'm a bit of a stranger to them myself as well. Most of my adventures are landlocked. Well, uh, why don't you tell me about one of your adventures? <laughs> <laughs> he just starts to drink. What is it, <laughs> He pours Claire. you guys glasses and, you know, kind of pushes them in your direction. Take notes. <laughs> She's gonna sip, sip on it, not, like, down it like anger. Okay. Yeah, I'll sip on mine as well, nurse okay. it. Um, let's see. <laughs> well, oh, what has happened to me? So, I was... Coming. I was trying to find my way from 
Oris Ren, which is where I'm from. <coughs> and ironic that that's where we're headed. And I was trying to make my way across to Ailos. And I tell you what, the desert of Bakarai is a lot more daunting than you would imagine. Like, it looks so small on the maps, especially the two joints between the uh, the mountains, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I ended up walking through probably, oh, I don't know, a couple of days or so. And uh, my, my I'll be honest, my water skin was running a bit low, and all I had was some wine. And I, I'll be honest, I looked off to the north, it must have been, and this... Crazy short motherfucker. Now he was shorter than me. Was just standing naked on the hill <laughs> with a torch in his hand, really? chatting with a snake. I had no idea what it was about, hmm. but that was an interesting day. Now I don't know if that's what I was supposed to see or if I was just you know hanging out and getting crazy, but. Uh, yeah, and then I found the riverbed, and things got a little more normal after that. Fascinating. But it is, isn't it? Uh, he, he drinks more and turns over and goes, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you, Missy, he got any good stories? Not really. I grew up on the streets, so... Ay, wasn't... fuck. Excuse me for not having any stories to bore you with about naked men standing on hills with torches, but my life hasn't been that exciting, hence the trip we're on now. Uh huh. So, um, what exactly is it that you're you're up to now? Maybe I'm looking for an adventure. Maybe uh-huh. develop a story that I could tell you later in life. Should we run into each other again? Mm. You know, if I don't die. <laughs> he starts to, like, refill his cup a little bit. Currently, we're on a... We're on our way to the mountains of Markan. Or Markan. <clears throat> Just on a bit of an expedition down to the the southern slopes. So your group's uh, a bunch of treasure hunters or something. That's what In a it way, is. everyone's got their own way of making it work in the world. Huh. So you two just kind of do this thing on the side when you're traveling. What? Do what on the side? What? What kind of thing? Yeah, he puts down his glass and he puts his hands up in quotation marks and he goes, The work you were offering. (laughs) I was was looking for actual work. I'm not sure what the quotations mean, but... Yeah, you know, like sweeping or moving boxes and stuff like that. Or cooking. His, his, like, jaw kind of drops for a second. He goes, Ah... (laughs) <laughs> Why, what, what, what did you think that we meant? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did he mean, Tidge? What, does, does Tidge get it at that moment? Yes. Okay, give wait, me wait, a wait, second. Wait, 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 let me, let me roll intelligence and see if he does. <laughs> Thirteen. It's up to you. Uh... I'll, I'll say that he at least thinks that he understands. Okay, so he looks over and he goes, uh, uh, <clears throat> Well, I assure you that is not what I meant. Well, that's good, because uh, that would be strange. And he kind of just, you know, looks at you, then looks over at Annabelle. Annabelle, when he looks over at you, do you say anything? I don't know what we're talking about, but all right. Strange. Maybe that's for the best. And he kind of looks over at you, Tidge. I will, like, keep making maintaining eye contact. I'll just kind of, like, <laughs> lean over to Annabelle and be like, He thought we wanted to have sex with him. 
<laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> what? So you whisper and then uh Annabelle just says, Oh goodness, and then he goes, What? What did you <laughs> That's a bit forward, Captain? You're telling me you came to my door. You came to your door asking for work. Yes, the but in the me. moment, you see it. And the way you said it was, it really seemed like it wasn't exactly the standard work that you were offering. Forgive me, Captain, but I think you're spending a little too much time on the sea. Another her. I might, uh, I might be done with this conversation. Uh, how about <laughs> you two take well, your uh, your glasses there, finish your drinks, and uh, you know, kind of. Um, well, there's plenty else but, to see but on wait. the ship. We don't need to end it right now. What? Now that you understand us, now that we're all on the same page. Yeah, right. Now do that we have you know any work? What kind of work we want? <laughs> Does that change your mind? The more we do, like you could put us in the bottom of the deck, and you wouldn't even have to see us. He, he opens his mouth multiple times, like he's about to say something, and, and like keeps stopping over and over. <laughs> and uh, he goes, uh, nope, uh, no work. No, no work. Out of curiosity, Captain, how much does that sort of, quotations, work pay? He kind of looks over at you, Tidge. <laughs> I'm good. I'll cock an eyebrow and slowly turn my head to Annabelle. He, he just looks over at you, head. Annabelle, and he says, Well, I'm not paying a dime for this one, and it kind of points at Tidge across the table. <laughs> no oh, offense, I just... I wasn't like I said before, I thought I was clear, but it's never been my thing. Uh, but it, well, it pays... Uh, I don't really, you know, the mood is gone, is is what I mean to say. She's gonna... So it doesn't pay anything. <laughs> Lean her elbows on the table and, like, cock her head to the side. Are you sure, Captain? Because you seem pretty interested before. What changed your mind? Are, are you attempting to seduce the Captain? Because if you are, I need you to make a persuasion roll. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? She's pretty desperate. She's gotta this. feed Kaelic. <laughs> oh my god. She's <laughs> 19. Oh my god. Uh, do you have any bonuses? Is that a oh, 20 persuasion. or is that a 19? Hang on. Oh my, persuasion Because there is a amazing. mild difference. Oh. Plus 7. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. So that's a 26? <laughs> Uh, the captain seems kind of flabbergasted when you uh, kind of lean forward on the table. He instinctively leans backwards on the table, <laughs> like in the opposite direction away from you. And uh, he goes, well, I'm not really uh, comfortable talking about such things in uh, this kind of company. Um, but I could, uh, I could be uh, persuaded. I will, I will down my drink. Good luck, Annabelle. Knock on the door if you need anything. And can, I I, can I show up at this point? <laughs> <laughs> so, what have, what have you and Edgar been talking about upstairs? I, I would, like, like show him some, like, I have several tattoos hidden of, like, constellations and point up. Like, oh, hey, look. That, that well, I, this, I would this, be this. zero interested. In <laughs> yep. I wouldn't care. I would still say it, and I'd be like, oh, wait. Where'd Annie go? I'll start taking a piss up. off the deck while you play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a grumble in your stomach, you turn around and, and realize that Annie's been gone for like a while now, and uh, just that chat with the captain seems to be taking some time. Are you headed down to the lower deck? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to make an initiative check, please. Hell yeah. Do you catch her in the act, or in the negotiation? <laughs> yeah, you might want to roll very well, or very poorly. Uh, it's a 17. Okay. 
I'm gonna roll initiative for Captain here. Main hand waifu, is that really what you named your dice? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um So you get down over here at this point, having you know spent a, a good deal of time showing these constellations to Edgar, but by the time that he's taken a piss off the side of the deck, you decide the conversation's over, and your source of food is not here. Might as well go find out what's going on with that. You step down the uh down the steps there. And uh, the door at the very end opens, and Tidge, as you kind of close the thing behind you... I thought you, it was already open. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, you, you know, you pass through, close the door. Uh, are you Actually, what do you close the door, Tidge? You just leave it open. Um... I will... Given circumstances. What would uh, Tidge do? I'll do, I'll, I'll do a little uh, message cantrip to Annie. And, uh, do, do you want me to close the door? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm familiar with how message works. Uh, you just hear those words in your mind and know that you can instinctively respond with about a sentence. No, I know how message works. I don't know if she knows how message works. Oh, no, you, you just feel that intrinsically. Like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you can tell that it's like a two-way thing and you get, like, roughly a sentence. Like, question, question... <laughs> okay. And I'll shut the door behind me. Okay. Uh, Tibbs steps out into the hallway and closes the door at the other end there. And as you kind of look past, you see stepping down on the uh, the opposite end of the hall is Kalik. Uh, and uh, Kalik, you see Tidge. What do you want to do? Oi, right, Tidge! And I'll start walking towards him. Have you seen Annie? I have. She's in there with the captain right now. Oh! I'll um, make my way over and knock on the door. <clears throat> that, oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so before you can get over there during that time, after the door had closed, uh, you know, Sornagun would kind of look past you, stare, see the door closes, and then turn to you and say, uh, well, it depends on what you're uh, willing to do, but I have some gold laying around. And then at that point, there's like a knock on the door, and, and the captain just looks up again and goes, <laughs> sick. <laughs> Annie! <clears throat> Annie! <clears throat> Annie's gonna look annoyed now, too. Like, I'm trying to make money, Kaylin! <laughs> <laughs> so gross! The captain what pounds you... his drink. <laughs> what? <clears throat> what, do you... what do you mean? Go away! <laughs> but I'm hungry! <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Edgar. The captain turns towards you and says to you in a low enough voice that you're pretty sure that past the door it couldn't be heard, but he's not whispering either, and he just, you know, his glass lands on the table and he says, Missy, you're hot as shit, but this just seems worse and worse by the second. Doesn't feel right. You mind if I come in there? <laughs> It's still in a low voice, so you can't hear the captain. was just like mumbling to himself now. He's like, Of course, you can't come in here. Come on in! It's not locked! <laughs> Alright, open the door. I'm sorry, Captain. <laughs> I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused you. And she's gonna get up at that point. Thank you for the drink and your kind hospitality. He holds up the drink, but it's already empty, and he just kind of looks at the empty glass, puts it down, and uh, kind of, you know, <laughs> stares off into the distance. Tid, are you still in the hallway while this exchange is going on? She gives him a nod. Um, sure. Why not? Uh, Kalik, I'd like you to make a perception check. Sure. Nineteen. You see that the captain, uh, you know, puts down his drink and looks over in your <clears throat> direction, roughly, but you realize that he's actually just staring at Annabelle's ass the whole way as she gets over towards the door, and then he at some point looks over, sees that you're seeing him, and he says, close the door, would you? Oh, while I'm here, do you happen to have any, uh, oh. extra work? <laughs> extra what? <laughs> work! <laughs> you know... You don't work. You pay for me to do something. He gets up. <laughs> and 
He kind of like stumbles for a moment. The, <laughs> the ship like tips for a second as a wave hits it, and he kind of pauses. He's like, uh, uh, okay. He gets over here, and then kind of puts like a hand gently on your shoulder, Annabelle, and then like moves it to your back, and then pushes you out the door. <laughs> and closes it. Uh, and then you what? hear like a click. <laughs> click. What did I say? I. Yeah, you ruined it all, Kaelic. You Cap ruined it. You're never eating again. What? I hope you're happy with yourself. And do I... your talking away from my door. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> She's making her way up, back up the deck. I'm following her. Do you realize you staring at your ass as you're walking out? Yeah, that was the point, Kaelic. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean that's the point? Edgar, the door flies right. open here towards the uh, the steps, and you watch as, like, Annabelle steps through, and Calix steps through, and he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> the two are kind of yelling at each you other. I don't, Edgar, I... I really need to make some money. I don't understand. Calix ruined it all. I don't understand. Now... You're going to ask for honest work? Wait. Shut it, Are you Kalec. asking for honest work? Shut it, Calix. <laughs> And now, please, oh my god, don't involve me. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar should have just, like, turned and jumped off the ship. No, like, like, real nonchalantly, like, two-stepped off the gangplank and just... <laughs> I'll turn back towards the ocean. I'm just trying to drown it out. Ugh. Edgar, are you not listening to me? I don't really have a choice. I'm good, because I'm going to keep talking to you, regardless of if you're listening or not, so you might as well pay attention. I'm just talking towards the ocean at this point. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna, like, lean really close to his face. Alright, can you hear me now? <sighs> Metric gave me strength. <laughs> I'll look up towards the skies. <laughs> Edgar, I really need your help. I don't I'll... know how to make money. I'll turn and towards her. Okay. Calic, Calic wrecked my only lead. And I have to feed him somehow. Yeah. I only have one gold. You do realize the captain is giving us food every day. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but do you? That, no, you're not understanding. Your whole job seems to be, your whole thing seems to be centered around you feeding someone who is going to be fed. You don't understand. When we okay. get off the ship, we're not going to be fed every day reliably. Doesn't that make sense to you? So, it, well, eventually, I'm guys, going to yeah. need... <clears throat> eventually... Annie, Annie, I don't I don't understand. You wanted me to go on this adventure. You said you'd feed me if I came along. And now you're grumbling and complaining the whole way through. Hey, I didn't know the ship was going to cost so much gold. Well, it's not my fault. It is your fault, Kaelic. If you didn't eat as much as you do, <laughs> it wouldn't be a problem. I'm turning back towards the ocean at this point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just forget it. <laughs> that captain... That captain is a pervert, You you understand. Nearby, you hear, like, a muffled voice, like, Who broke that crate? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Still ignoring them. <laughs> At this point, I'm gonna just ignore him, too. Like, he just made me so mad. <laughs> Maybe. Worst case, you start. <laughs> Star! It's not a part of our agreement. Eight ball lands, sources point to no. If I can't get money, then I can't feed you, Kaelic. I hope you understand that. <sighs> Maybe you could help yourself. That's what I told him. And like a pouty little kid, I'll like <laughs> turn around and start heading towards uh, our room. I'll you look say at the captains. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll, look, I'll look at Annabelle and just give you give you like a best of luck look. Like 
Like, I... On my way to the room, okay. thinking, oh man, I really need to make money. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> He's gonna gap a little away. <laughs> I'm gonna Wait. knock on the door, yeah. <laughs> okay, so during this time, while you'd gone up there, Tidge, where would you have gone? Um, I would have started making my way down the hall. Now, would there still be some activity going on in this There's room a 24 7 party in here, and what sounds like snoring coming from the other room loudly. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, not, I'll have knocked on the door. Oh, sure, okay. Uh, knocking on the door there, and this is a little bit before Kalec comes down. Uh, somebody calls and goes, uh, yeah, come in. Uh, I'll walk in. As you open up the door, you find roughly 12 people who are all gathered into this room. It's got a similar layout to yours, but some uh, modifications seem to have taken place. A couple of the walls have been removed, like these little dividers, and they lay on the ground... Um, one of them propped up, so like it's been changed into uh, a table, like it's been put on top of some crates, and everyone's kind of seated around the table. So there's a whole bunch of people there. I'll, I'll give you some little tokens to give you an idea of just how cramped it is in here. And uh, some people appear to be like laying comatose in a, in a pile of like blankets and pillows <laughs> while others seem to be gathered around the table and you see what looks like cards and dice and like figurines and stuff and uh, there's like coins all over the table and, and uh, you see that the mix is mostly human um, with a uh, halfling and a gnome as well kind of interspersed and uh, you know they kind of look over to you and, and one of them just says you play? Sure, anything to pass the time. Uh, you see a lot of smiles come from the table, and one says, uh, you drink? Of course. <clears throat> you smoke? Look at me. <laughs> of course I do. Last question, you got coin? I've got a bit. One of them kind of like moves out of the way and puts like a cushion down on the ground for you to come sit next to him. Sure. Alright, the ante's five gold. Here, and uh, one of them, like, hands you what appears to be a, uh, like, a bottle of beer, a small bottle of beer, and, uh, <laughs> puts, like, a little bit of some sort of, uh, tobacco down in front of you on, like, a little, uh, square of paper. Those you got your own, or...? Sadly, I do not. I'm fresh out. I got extras, uh, and he kind of, like, hands over to you what looks like a clay pipe. Well, much obliged. <coughs> Now, do you know anything? Do you have any uh, proficiencies with the gaming sets? Nope, and okay. I don't even have enough gold to buy in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you sit there and you know that um, the guy's like, okay, well, uh... <laughs> give me two seconds, give me two seconds. <laughs> We're so fucking broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Have you ever played Lightning Court before? And can't the, the game that. is completely foreign to you. You've never heard of it. I can't say that I have. It's a, uh, it's a Dragonborn game. Play over there. And, uh, well, got all the pieces here. Been playing it for a few days. Uh, super fun. Basically, it's like this, okay? And, uh, while he's explaining, you see people who... Um, kind of finish up their round and start to arrange things <clears throat> in front of themselves the same way that this guy is helping you to arrange things. He puts a couple of dice here, people do the same, gives you like, you know, a few cards, blah, blah, blah. While this is happening, people are also putting money onto the table. And at some point in the middle of explaining, um, he just kind of stops and looks at you and is like, oh, you, you got the gold, right? I've got a gold. <laughs> well, I mean... Well... Somebody calls from across the table. Uh, it looks like a, a human male in uh, some nice clothes. And he goes, You came in with some friends, didn't you? Maybe they have something. Well, I do have this uh, gold chain. Can't say that I know exactly what it's worth, but... That's probably worth. five. You guys think that's five? Yeah, that looks like five. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay. So the goal of the game is, and I need you to roll an intelligence check to 
try and get the rules. Okay. <clears throat> Fifteen. It's your first time playing, but you're a pretty uh, sharp cookie, and you get the general gist of the game. You know when it is that points are good and when they're not, kind of what the strategy is, but you don't really know how things are going to proceed. And when the game kicks off, I want you to make a luck roll to see just how fortunate you are here. Come on. <laughs> not very. Oh, wait, I'm half. No, that's right. <laughs> Um, so the guy next to you kind of helps you out, and, uh, periodically he's like, so if you have a two, you can play that here, and, uh, oh, that's not good, you really don't want that. Well, you know, it, that's how it is sometimes, uh, maybe on, uh, oh, no, that's not good either. Oh, you, so you want to roll ones, and, uh, oh, that's a five. And, <laughs> and just, like, periodically you realize that you're getting nowhere on the board, and eventually the game ends, and you lose the chain and the gold piece, which uh, goes to somebody across the table there. Whoa, you said the chain was worth five. Yeah, it looks like about five, right? Yeah, so I think I would maintain the gold piece. Sharp one. Okay, okay. <laughs> A few of them kind of look at each other and nod. Um, somebody kind of like just leans back and passes out into some blankets, and uh, somebody rolls over a gold piece in your direction. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess that's a no to another one. It would seem that no. I'm a bit out. Uh, given that your character is um, kind of into uh, intellectual pursuits and everything, uh, Lightning Court is fascinating, and you find that, despite the fact that you can't play another one, it's actually really fun, even though you kind of got your ass handed to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's it's sort of regrettable that you don't really have enough to play with them again. Just just the experience of it was like, oh, that was a good time. And the, the whole round took roughly about, like, 30 minutes to complete or so. So at, at this point, while you're in there, um, Kay, like you would have come down here, and, you know, Tidge is nowhere to be found. Uh, where are you going? To I'm the captain. To see Tidge. Okay, so when you get into this room, you find that Tidge isn't there, and then just snoring like, you know, like mm -hmm. a mountain bear. Marillo is there, laying over his two mattresses. <laughs> 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 right where you guys left him. I'll shake Arillo away. Okay. Arillo, you're woken up by Kalik there. Oh, what's, what's going on? cut out? Is it Discord? I don't know. Okay, I hear you guys. I'm back. Oh, Sorry. There we go. I, I had a phone call. I was just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, have, you, have you seen Titch around? Uh, last time I saw him, he was in his room. I, I've been sleeping and quite a room. while. And I'll like, just peer over a sec. And then I'll hear... Can I hear like the rowdiness? Over, yes, but it's been either. like that forever. I will let you make a perception check to hear if uh, uh, Tidge can be heard from among the people. Yeah, 15 or higher. Uh, it's a 15. Okay. Plus 6. 6. You hear from the sound of the sadness. Door. What sounds like, yeah. <laughs> Tidge is like, oh, come on, come on, and then, oh, and then, you know, a whole bunch of people kind of you know, shout out at the same time. I'll head over there. Sure. Rillo, care to care to join me? Uh, sure. I can use some. I can stretch a bit. All right. Head over. Knock on the door. Okay. Rillo, you're uh, you're with him there. Yep. Okay. Tapping on the door. Um, somebody you know turns from the game table. Come in. I'll open it, peer inside, see Tidge, and be like, ah, and I'll just invite myself in. Yeah, he's seated there at this massive table, and. Uh, you know, um, Tidge, you're halfway through the game when this happens, and uh, both Arillo and Kalik kind of come in, and uh, you see one of the humans turns to both of you there. Uh, it's a woman in fine clothes, and she goes, We're just uh, finishing here. Uh, maybe another ten minutes or so. You're welcome to wait. Sure. All right. Could I have been coming down, too? Sure. I would have wanted to play, get some dice in at least one okay. time that night. <clears throat> Kalik disappears down into the lower deck, and uh, that leaves um, you and Annabelle up there. What do you guys want to do? Uh, Annabelle, are you going with him? Are you going to the uh, the party room next to yours? 
Yeah, I might as well if I'm alone on the deck. <laughs> so, Edgar's Turned like, well, I better go do some stuff. <laughs> uh, eventually, you step in here, and they're like, you know, yeah, come have a seat, and uh, just wave you in. You know, some people kind of shuffle around a bit so that you guys can find some space and everything. And uh, how long do you wait up here, Annabelle, alone before you decide to go and find out what's going on? I don't know, two minutes or so. Okay. You wait a couple minutes and then uh, head off. And while you're passing by the hall here, you can clearly hear what sounds like your party inside the party room. Okay. And uh, tapping there, they tell you to just come in. And soon, all of you guys are in here watching this... Um, elaborate game being played out with a ton of dice. A few people are not involved in the game and seem to be passed out, and there's gold all over the table. And by the time that you get in here, Annabelle, you um, show up just in time to watch Tidge lose all his money. He calls over saying that the coin should at least be his, and people kind of, you know, have a, a joke about the thing and hand it back to him. And uh, somebody says, So, uh, any of you guys want in? Auntie's would five I have, gold. Would I have seen the chain that I gave to Tidge be, like, pushed <clears throat> across the table. Yeah, you didn't notice it at first, but as people start to collect their winnings and everything, you realize that amongst the items that Tidge had there was the chain. I'll, like, panic for a second. I'd be like, yeah, uh, I would like to play, but could you wager that back? Uh... And I'll point over towards the chain. Sure, there's a nobleman from across the table there, or at least what appears to be one, a man in very fine clothes, who kind of has pulled all the pot in this direction, and he uh, he kind of looks over and goes, uh, what, really? And he's got, uh, like, a pipe kind of hanging out of his mouth, and he holds up the chain. Uh, yes, it's more, it's not really worth much, it's just sen sentimental, I suppose. Not worth much, and he kind of looks over at you, Tidge. I'll shrug my shoulders. It's not worth... I mean, it's worth something, but... I mean, it's worth not, something, but not like... But not much. I mean, you all agreed that it was about five gold. It was enough to ante. He puts the thing back down and he says, fine. Start with this. Right, now... So I'll, I'll whisper to Titch, like, how do you play? <laughs> okay, so you roll the dice, and then you move the thing, and you need to get a lot, you just do a lot better than I did, but it's <laughs> incredibly fascinating. And I'll do my best to explain it to him. Okay. Uh, somebody nearby will be listening in and occasionally correct you when you get, like, a rule wrong or anything like that, or mention, like, additional strategy, and eventually people start to put their, their wagers forth, and it comes time for you guys to put down your five gold. Kalik, do you have five gold? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> oh shit. Um... Somebody's handing like a beer over to you, Edgar, and then kind of looks over towards the rest of them as the room grows like slightly silent and things get awkward <clears throat> when no money shows up again. I'll, 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 I'll start I'll... drinking, take a big seat, and just <laughs> take out my purse and put five down like it ain't no thing. <laughs> oh, let's say I, I look. I look at the chain because I really want the chain back, and I'll like hesitantly like reach into my pocket and I'll say, "How about we raise the ante?" And I put down a pearl <laughs> worth a hundred gold. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> 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 she almost pimped herself out, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Okay, you put down the thing, and uh, Edgar, did you put this five gold so you could play, or so that Kayla could play with your money? Oh, that I could play. Okay, yeah. so you're in on I, this. And... I don't really share well with others. And, uh... <laughs> Kayla, as you put the thing down, um, a few people will kind of look at each other like, Whoa. <clears throat> Hmm... People kind of I mean, if you, if you don't want to play, I'll, I'll, I'll take it, pick it up, and start putting it back in my pocket. I'm going to uh, roll for greed here. Uh, if this is an 11 or higher, somebody is willing to uh, to play that. Oh, shit. There it is. 
people kind of look around at each other, and uh, somebody's like, "Yeah, we don't really play for for that much." And someone just starts nodding across the table, and they go, uh, "You know, we do this all day, pretty much. Like, we're, we're gonna be at this, and and you know, if we if we're playing uh, like that, then well, <laughs> games would be over pretty quick." <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. And I, I pocket it. And I, I go up to Edgar and I see, say, <laughs> Edgar, <laughs> I, I'm trying to make an honest day's work. Could you please lend me five gold? I'll I'll pay you back. If I win, you can have the money. How about that? And if you lose? I, well, you still... You know what? We'll act like I won. And uh, I'll owe you... <laughs> I don't know how these things work. I'm sorry. <laughs> Clearly, because the what you just said was, I loan you five gold, and if you win, you pay me back. And if you lose, I pretend like you won. <laughs> so... No, I still, I still owe you either way. It's like Qui-Gon Jinn talking to fucking Watto. Just let Watto. me five gold, please. I'm just like whispering this. this. How about this? You wager the um, boy. No boy is worth two pots. <laughs> How about this, Kaleg? You, I'll, I'll lend you the five, take the pearl as collateral, and you can. Fair enough. Take out the pearl. <laughs> I, uh, I whip out a piece of paper and immediately start writing a contract. <laughs> People are like looking over and. Uh... I don't think we have time for. A, a, a oh, break. there, there's time. Uh, and Caleb and also... Edgar are kind of involved with one another, but Tidge, Annabelle, Arillo, you guys all notice that the others are kind of like watching and having a giggle about this. It's it's nothing <laughs> malicious, but they're you know they're it's kind of the talk of the room at the moment because they're all set up and ready to play, and this is just going on. Just just give me one minute, guys. Uh, it's it's a very quick and quick and dirty contract. Okay, <laughs> here you go, and uh, here you go, Caleb. Just sign. Can I um... incite that data e contract? <laughs> I, I want to read it real quick. Like, sure. just... It's a hundred percent honest. It, it simply states that if you uh, win, you can pay me back with your with your winnings, and I'm asking for a uh, twenty percent payout on top of the loan. So you would pay me six gold instead of five, and if you lose, I hold on to the pearl until you can pay me. And there's a 20% uh, point of interest cumulative per month. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, shit. I mean, it's not, it's not crazy. 20 per month, it's like six becomes whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. Does it state like I have to pay like everything I win? Uh, no, no. It just says you only have to pay me back five plus 20%. That's all. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd sign it. Okay. You sign it there, and uh, people are like, well... I'll, can you can you PM me? Maybe not now, but I know that you said uh, a prayer of Metri uh, last time we did a contract, and I'd like to know what that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Let me see if I can remember that off the top of my head. Um, if not, we can just make it a new thing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll, or we could watch the video after the fact. Yeah, I'll pass it to you again. But it, it was something like, um, you know... Uh, yeah, okay. Before the Holy God, <laughs> you, these two parties agree not to violate right. the terms. Yeah. So I, I would do that prayer, uh, sign the oath, and uh, or sign the other contract, and then I'd, give, I'd put down another five. Both of you are ready to play, and I need intelligence checks from the both of you guys to see if you can understand the game. This is new. Can I get... Oh, sorry, go ahead. And neither of you guys have seen this before. Can I... Do I get some kind of modifier since I'm proficient in dice games already? Uh, I would say that you'll probably get a bonus when playing. Okay. Could I help him out by, like, guiding him through, like, giving him some pointers and stuff? Oh, Even though I did so terribly. Sure. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sad. Okay. 
<laughs> Metri's um, got my back. Motherfuckers, Metri's got my back. The card portion of the game is different, but the dice portion kind of <laughs> reminds you of another game that you know, and you're like, oh yeah, no, that makes sense. And uh, meanwhile, Kalik, you're like kind of struggling to keep up. You feel like you could play, but you don't really know what you're doing. And uh, eventually, people are off to the races. Um, I would like everybody to make a roll. Uh, Edgar, you can roll your dice set. Um, so you, I'll say for this roll, you get plus just proficiency, no, no attributes or anything. Uh, Kalik, make a straight luck roll. Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got a fourteen. Oh, <laughs> fuck out of here! Okay. <laughs> That's some ridiculous shit. I'm gonna make a check here real quick. Uh, That's some ridiculous shit. Uh, you cannot play because Edgar just won next to you here. Not only playing very well, like he always seemed to kind of like you know um, pull away with just the right amount of points, and you kind of had the feeling like, oh fuck, this is really starting to go in his favor. And then he gets real lucky at the end and. Uh, takes the pot. Edgar, it's your first time playing. I'd like you to, uh, you know, take back your money, of course, and add 35 gold. HOT DAMN! <laughs> damn. Does he get the necklace back? Somebody that hands you another beer and, like, kind of nudges you with their arm, and is like, hey, he's a natural. And then, uh, somebody kind of nudges you around and is like, this motherfucker's pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You seem that way. Okay. Right. Um. And then so I just, over here in the I just corner. I won your money and I have your pearl. What's up? There's a there's a gnome girl over in the corner here, and she seems to have a like a, a human here who's more or less like a, they're attached at the hip, right? But she takes a moment to kind of lean over and whispers to you, Annabelle, and she's like, "I think your friend is fucked." Do I, uh, it's 35 gold plus my five, and the 35 pot includes the five I gave to Kalik, right? Yeah, the 35 pot has his money in it. Yeah. Okay, so and does it have the chain too? Uh, yes, you would have won the chain. Nice. I, uh, I want to lean back to the snow girl and say, what do you mean, fucked? Signs a contract and loses the moment now. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Edgar. Oh, I um, thought you were talking five about gold. somebody's Come coming after him. He won the money. You play me dirty like no, that. No, no. <laughs> play you. Play you dirty, Kalik. And I get oh, real serious God. now. I look at him. <laughs> Pull out the contract. <laughs> I'm, trying not to laugh. I'm trying not to laugh at the, at the role play. This one. I get really serious. <clears throat> look, uh, <laughs> we signed a contract and it was the way it goes. You wanted to play a game and that's it. You want another five? It's another contract. You don't have collateral anymore. Oh, sorry, you do. I'm sorry. We could draft up another one. You would owe me ten plus the twenty percent. Fair enough. Okay. Kill, I swear to all that's holy. You better not do this again. <laughs> relax, relax. I have no risk involved because I have a pearl. I can. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll whip up. Uh, what, what? I'll just amend the contract if that's yeah, possible to reflect a plus five, and it's still the same term. So twenty percent if he were to win, um, and uh, yeah, and if he if there's any outstanding debt remaining, it's twenty percent per month. Okay. After seeing the game played, can I like to understand it a little bit more? Like roll another in check. Sure. <laughs> or does that stay? No, oh, you can definitely roll again. You okay. learn, man. You learn with time, like Terminator. <laughs> okay, okay. You don't have a disco funk, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we need to offhand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you go ahead and, uh, you know, you're trying to get the rules here, and they're making more and more sense, but you find that um, the way that the players kind of jostle for position is a little bit confusing, and you're not really sure when it is that you want to kind of go in or, or pull out on some of the cards being put down. But you're getting better. And uh, as you guys get ready to go for another one, somebody claps their hands and is like, Ooh, we got ball players! And uh, <laughs> the dice start to roll, and I need once again uh, luck rolls from you all. You can add proficiency, Edgar. Oh. Just my proficiency. 
I'm just watching. I'm not taking any interest in the game. <laughs> <coughs> so what do we got? Sorry, I have the chat off right now. 12 and 13? Okay. 13. Uh, 12 for me, 13 for, for Kaylee. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, neither of you guys win this round. It's actually a close one, and nobody really seems to be getting much on the table. Somebody across the way, what appears to be a, a halfling over here in the back right, just barely kind of ekes out the win. And, uh... He makes like an actual show of it at the end, like stepping up onto the table, and he's like, thank you, kind of like <laughs> leans over, takes a few coins from one guy, thank I'll, you. I'll be laughing over. and clapping, like, <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you, and he kind of like bows to you. And... All right, all right, Edgar, one final time. <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God, last time. Keelik. <laughs> this is a terrible idea, Keelik. While Annabelle's no, like to whispering to you, you, as you look over, you see like the gnome girl is leaning over to Annabelle to whisper to her, and she's like, "Yeah, you you don't want to let him go too far into this." <laughs> and uh, at that moment, we'll go to a brief five ten minute break. Oh, <laughs> <Yes, you can. laughs> uh, maybe. The double nat twenty was uh, was particularly nice. Oh my god, that's so crazy. I'm rich as fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. I, I yeah. figure I could probably sell the pearl for 50. Like, I know you're saying it's worth 100, I'm giving it 50. Okay, because I know, like, no. I, I know there's some, there's some, there's some fucking crazy merchant shit going on. So 50, I figure, hey, you're in the hole. I sell the pearl. I make a nice little, you know, profit on top. It's all good. The ship is a roller coaster. It's like, <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> broken dreams, misunderstanding, <laughs> riches to be made, Beautiful. debts to be gained. I guess de debts to be gained. Are a you booty, glad? A we booty didn't... offered up. What's that? You glad we didn't fast travel? Well, I was hoping that you weren't, because I remember last session you guys were like, no, no, we want to do stuff on the ship. And then, yeah, we so when we started, I was like, oh, it kind of feels like they just want to fast travel. So I guess that changed. But no, it's, it's good you guys got rolling. But uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to get some water. I am going to run to the bathroom. Really hoping you don't sell that pearl, because then I can't cast identify. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> oh, I'm worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> I get to hold on to it until uh, you pay me back. Yep. It's just uh, the way of the world, man. Yep, yep. Like, Kalik wouldn't know at all. Like, <laughs> he'd be like, oh, yeah, it's a debt. Like, it <coughs> can't be that hard to pay off. Come on. Let's Come on. Real. Come on. And don't forget, you owe Tidge an amount too, right? Of your loot? Yep. <laughs> I feel like you didn't remember that! Yep. <laughs> Kaelic wouldn't have remembered. Because he doesn't consider that, like, party loot. Right, right, right. Well, no, not this part, but anything we, we do to earn money after yep. the fact... To, to earn that money back to pay me off, you're gonna have to split off. Anyways, oh my god, that's good. Sweet, sweet release. Dude, that was a lot of gold. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you got a crap ton of gold. Yeah, well, I'm at, I was at 50, and then I played and bankrolled uh, Kalix, so I'm at 41 gold now. Holy shit. But I have 100 GP Pearl in my pocket, so it's all good. <laughs> <clears throat> Gotta take these RP moments because I feel like we're gonna be getting some combat. Combat, combat. Yep. So we get the mainland. Yep. Once Illusion gets the ball rolling on shit, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> suddenly we have Theo. Fucking sending winged bat armies after us, and we're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I mean, after having so many like, "Oh shit!" moments in episode one, 
I'm kind of <laughs> relishing this. Yeah. It's nice because really, like, the second half of the campaign was really high paced. Yep. Especially in the Underdark. We there was never really respite of any kind. It was just boom, back to back to back to like, back. Oh fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> the cave. Oh, the cave. It, it's a cave in. Oh, those, that's like thousands of rust, rust beads or whatever. They came back oh. just to hear three consecutive oh, oh fucks. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what are these guys talking about? Oh, those things. Oh, my God. What happened? An old episode oh, during their. We were just uh, saying, first yeah, campaign. how it was. It was nice. Um, it's been nice to have a lot of role play lately because the second half of our campaign uh, that went on for a year was like really back to back action towards the end. Not a lot of people to talk to in the Underdark. Just a lot of things. <laughs> exactly. <wanna> eat you. <laughs> exactly. So we have a fucking tunnel that was in the process of being fucking mind controlled <laughs> by a vampire. We took. Out. <laughs> it sounds crazy now that I say it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hardly believe the words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> well, he was trying. We don't know if he would have ever actually been successful, but... <clears throat> that, uh... That thing exists, by the way. Like, we Why? talked about that, right? I told you that, right? The tower still exists? Yeah, it's, it's like a, a thing that can be accessed on the map. Oh, damn. Actually, it's still in the world. Oh, damn. I, I don't know if you guys have bumped into it. <laughs> Maybe some group will be like, so this undead vampire fucker <laughs> almost TPK'd us. Imagine the, the fucking... Calling you adventurers, salty. stay away from my tower, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I've had enough. Be, it's gotta be salty as fuck now. Like, I, I <laughs> fucked up his painting. I fucked up his painting real bad. Real I made bad. fun of him and his wife. Which must have been a kind of sensitive topic. For <laughs> 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 <Just> a wee <laughs> bit. <laughs> I mean, she only killed herself, so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to D and D, boys. Welcome to D and D. Shit. You know, in the end, a lot of people have gained, a lot of people have lost, but if one person's lost, it's the captain. I feel bad for him. <laughs> Who? The captain. Oh. Yeah, what I the feel fuck? bad for the captain. Oh. <laughs> he made his own bed. <laughs> Making assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> Too many cooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Alright, are, uh, are we ready to go? Is Arilla back? Yep. Sweet. He is indeed. Alright, I am ready if you guys are ready. Mm -hmm. yep. Got my teddy grams. Oh, that sounds good. Alright, uh, welcome back, guys. So you are all here, gathered, ready to play the next round. Some words of advice are leveled uh, in your direction, though, Kalik. How do you respond? Alright, Edgar. <laughs> I'm in that bad boy one more time. <laughs> hmm? I'm in it. One more time. <laughs> Before he does, I would like to say, Keelik, if you choose to do this, you seem to be confident in your ability to pay back 15 gold plus interest. Maybe you can buy your own food. Aye. That wasn't our agreement. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Annabelle, Annabelle, don't worry, he can pay it back. And I kind of bring up the pearl. <sighs> You're not pocketed again. Don't you need that for a spell? I'll be chatting with the rest of the group here. Like, the, the, the strangers across the table and shit. Yeah, there's a guy behind you who seems to be a merchant of some kind. And, uh, he's like, oh, it's getting a little saucy. What? Well, I mean... Do you want to get in on the action? No, 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 I've been playing all night. I think I'm going to wait till tomorrow or something. <laughs> Fair enough. Come on, Kalik. <clears throat> While they're yeah. chatting away, can I just I... pull a Rillo aside real well, just chat with him real quick? Sure, yeah. Be like, uh, all right, before I say anything, feel free to say no, especially since I already owe you 
10 gold and a magical quest to find a bunch of shrines. But I really feel like I, I figured this game out and I think I just need one more chance. So now remember, you can say no, but if you could man loan me just a paltry four gold, I oh. think I can handle this. <clears throat> if you even have it. Uh, the uh, I, I... the person behind you, there's a there's a chick behind you in fine clothes, and she, you know, she puts her hand around your shoulder there, Tidge, and then nods in your direction, Orillo, and she's like, he's probably good for it. Oh, I know he is. Ah, uh, I would lend you the four, but I only have three on me. I can give you that, but you'd have to get get the other one from somebody else. The girl whispers in your ear, Tidge, as she, like, you know, kind of pulls her arm away and, and leans back into her chair. And uh, she does so, she's just like, oh, I need some richer friends. <laughs> hmm. Would you care to be one? Ooh. Persuasion roll, please! <laughs> <laughs> that would be a 20, I believe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, she gives you a smile when you say that, but does not respond. And uh, she kind of puts her goal down on the table and then uh, waits while you two <laughs> finagle getting enough money for another <laughs> round. I'm putting it on the paper. Edgar, amend it. One final oh, time. Sure. Sure. Okay. So. 15. <laughs> same terms. Yep. yep. Still have a pearl. <laughs> yep. All right. Here we go. At this point. Annie's going to be extremely exasperated and storm <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> hey, uh, I think your girlfriend's mad. <laughs> what? Uh, Tidge. I think your girlfriend's mad! <laughs> <laughs> She's not even here. <laughs> exactly my point. Did, did you not notice her leave? No, I was talking to you. <laughs> I'll just laugh and be like, sign the fucking paper. <laughs> I, I sign it. Gnome girl sits up at the <clears throat> table and she's like, well, I guess I'll play then. <laughs> Put some money down. And uh, over here, Tidge, you feel a, a pinch on uh, your right butt cheek. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, when she lays down her uh, her one gold, I'll wink at her and then I'll put my hand out to Arillo. No, when, when you turn to wink at her, you see that uh, she's <laughs> holding a single gold for you. I'll, I'll, I'll bow deeply. Thank you, my lady. Um, what does she look like? Uh, she looks like a... Let me roll a, a d20 here. Buffalo. <laughs> Actually, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so we'll roll some luck here. And, uh, okay, it's average. Let's roll a, let's roll a d10. Uh, she's a solid eight. Human, though. Um, but, uh, is... she seems to be dressed in fine clothes, which suits her well, and, uh, she looks to be in, uh, kind of like the middle of her adulthood there. Well, let's see if Lady Luck is on my side. Although you may be all the luck I need. She kind of looks at you and she's like, well, now you're just laying it on thick. <laughs> <laughs> I have certain talents. <laughs> and with that, I thought he was going to say thickness. <laughs> yeah. yes. I was hoping for that. I was waiting for a thick joke. <laughs> no, you guys seriously overestimate me. <laughs> she gives you a smile and grabs the dice, and everybody gets ready to play here. Contracts have been signed. Uh, people who can't handle the game have stormed off. <laughs> and uh, it's time for everyone to get maybe, horribly in debt. <laughs> maybe I'm uh, searching for another game. I need a uh, luck roll from you, please, Tidge. Or, sorry, an intelligence roll. And you can do another one as well, Kalik. Edgar has got this game down. <sighs> Son of a... Not 20! Not 20! Uh, both having troubles. 10 this time. Okay. <clears throat> you guys are getting it. Uh, as this next round comes up, I want everybody to roll a luck roll. Edgar, you can add your plus 2 to it. Come on, bitch! Fuck. I'm in uh, debt. Yep. <laughs> Let's bad, bad, not good. <laughs> Let's see what everybody at the table gets. Maybe they roll horribly. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Uh, what was your highest? 
Uh, 11 for me. Okay. Across the way, um, let's see here. Uh, it's actually your lady friend next to you, Tidge, who pulls uh -huh. away with the win here and uh, takes all of the gold from you guys, and you find that you're all down rather quickly here. Well, not too quickly. These matches last quite a bit, and everyone's had a good time by the time it's over, but you guys lose five gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I've gained so much more. <laughs> 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 now, this round takes a while what are you up to Abdel? Uh, are you like just gonna just launch into your bed depressed here I can't believe mm -hmm. oh damn <laughs> <laughs> I, I just saw her go the other way yep. I can't talk about a mouthful of telegram so it's gonna look <laughs> mouthful of the captain what <laughs> got a mouthful of teddy grams and I'm about to get my fuck on I'd like you to uh, make a luck roll as you tap onto the door there. Come here, baby. A ten. A ten? You get no response from the other side. All right. I see how it is. Can I whisper? Captain! <laughs> make a perception check as you whisper to the door. Oh, okay. Twenty. Faint. Far in the corner, the one where you remember the bed being, you hear a snoring sound. Alright, well, I give up on that idea. <laughs> easy come, easy go. Now I'm gonna sulk in my room. Okay. Uh, you go and tuck away in there, and uh, the group back here is faced with the prospect of another game. It's getting late. It's easily, uh, um, you can tell that the sun's gone down and past the windows there, it's darker. But people just, you know, put on lights and uh, continue smoking and drinking all evening. That stuff is provided free of charge. And uh, certain players come and go from the table. Um, do you guys want to deal in for another one or kind of like sit some out or what do you want to do? I, I will, will play another one. Sit some out. <laughs> I'll play another one. <laughs> Kalik? <laughs> All right, Edgar. It's I like I kind of like put my head down. It's so disappointing. Maybe it's like, not for you, I, Caleb. Well, uh, listen. I read no. so many stories, and I don't know. I just... Look, it's like I said. The stories are not exactly a reflection of uh, what happens, but it's a better truth. Ask yourself this: Did you have fun? I'll kind of like smirk. There Just give you, you like go. a genuine, like a genuine, like, like smile. Uh, yeah. Look, I did. look, keep drinking, stay around, chat, meet some people, go to the other side of the table. I'm going to play another one, but it doesn't mean that you have to leave. Hmm. I'll, I'll sit and watch him. Sure. Experience life. Come on, guys. Another <laughs> round. <laughs> Coins land on the table. Some people bow out and others join in. And uh, I would like from you one of your uh, luck rolls with the plus two, please. Oh, that's that's what I'm talking about, son. Please, 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 Lord. Oh my God, I need this so bad. I could give him back the pearl. I could give him back to him. <laughs> What is that? A 17? Yeah, uh, yeah, 17. <clears throat> you get yours back, and a small pot of 10 gold from a round played with uh, only a few people across the table. Oh, damn! But you do make some as you win and beat them out. Somebody calls out from across the table and goes, This guy's... I don't know, I think he's played before. Ha 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 ha. Played dice before, not this, but I love this game. Uh, this person just kind of gives you a smile and starts pulling more gold out of a pouch and puts it down. Ah, uh, that's enough for me. I'm tired of seeing my friends pout here as I keep taking all your money. <laughs> uh, sure enough, uh, Edgar seems to be a pretty good player, and <clears throat> uh, over the next you know 30 minutes of, of that round, which was just concluded, you guys got to see him, um, you know work his magic and gradually pull out another win, a close one, but he managed it. And uh, seems that you guys are going to be stopping to play for now. Are you leaving the room or are you going to just hang out while people continue? Um, 
I mean, unless anyone seems like particularly interesting to Edgar, like either um, like decked out in armor and and just kind of um, battle worn or anything like that, ah. he'd probably just you know, yeah. Okay, go ahead. You definitely don't see any of that, and everybody here seems to be uh, you know varying degrees of wealth, merchants, fine clothes, that kind of thing. But there's nobody here who's got you know like a sword on their back or anything like that. And in the room, you just see. You know, there's there's equipment like backpacks and, and things, but most of it is just like cushions and blankets and stuff. Nobody here seems to be a, a battle worn fighter. The most well, weathered person is probably like one or two merchants in the room that have like a nick here and there, but that's it. Well, knowing that we're all going to the same place, I'm gonna go around and shake hands and like give out hugs to the people I've been vibing with and say sure. goodbye, share my name with them, maybe get that. Yeah, make names. a persuasion check with advantage. <clears throat> Sure. Disco fuck. You beautiful fuck. 19. Okay. Jesus Christ, disco funk. Uh, that's 24. Okay, so uh, you go around and chit chat with people and you um, find that they're uh, they're pretty receptive to you. And um, it's it's like one of those gatherings where the vibe is, is very much in line with what you're all about and people um, kind of form friendships pretty swiftly and, and are keen to meet the guy who's been, you know, trouncing at the table for the last little while. And uh, you can't meet everybody, as some people are, like, literally passed out on cushions. <laughs> <laughs> Under the but, effects, uh... perhaps, of the, the various things being passed <laughs> around. But uh, you meet a few different nobles, it seems. Um, you meet what appears to be a couple of merchants that are um, going on this cruise just as, uh, like, a thing to do. You know, it's not business-related, it's just... Uh, and some buddies get on the ship and then just gamble profusely. Um, that sort of thing. Cool. Well, maybe I'll run into them uh, in our destination. Cool. So I'll try to keep note of their faces and then uh, sure. I'll head out back okay. to the room. I'll follow Edgar. I'll try to make sure to like subtly like kind of like whatever. I'll, I'll pick up a new bottle as I'm talking to them and I'll leave with a pretty full bottle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'd like mm -hmm. to, to take some on my way. You, you big somebody. Road here. <laughs> <laughs> little road beer. Uh, Arillo and Tidge, as you see, you know, Edgar, like, mingles, and uh, Caleb kind of gets up to join him as he's headed for the door. Uh, what do you two do? Um, well... <laughs> <laughs> Before that last game that Edgar played, I would have bowed out, and, uh, depending on the level of interest, I would have backed off to sit with my new, uh, lady friend. Ah, okay. Now let me roll here. Uh, she plays in the next one, but seems to be happy to have you at her side. And while she's playing, you know, kind of going through her cards and everything, she uh, she small talks with you, and she's like, Oh, well, where are you from, Titch? And... I'm from Oris Ren. So you're going back home then? Temporarily. It's a stop along the way. A traveling man. You could say that. Where are you destined to? Is uh, Oris Ren your final stop? It is. Uh, if you're ever looking for uh, someone to play some games with, perhaps, uh, the name's Melissa, and she kind of extends her hand to you. I will extend mine as well. Tidge. Tidge Brindlestock. Are you from the Oris Ren region, then? My family's had a house there for some time. Uh, if you ever want to drop by, you know, feel free. I absolutely will. Seems you kept a bit of lady luck on your side that time, but uh, I had quite a bit of fun. She nods to you and she says, it's a good game. Uh, this is, it certainly uh, is. It's not my first time playing it, but I always like it. Yes, well, it which was my first time, but uh, I tell you what, it is incredibly fascinating. I'm quite into the uh, intellectual pursuits there, and this one certainly is a bit of a brain burner. You know, you wouldn't expect it of the Dragonborn. <laughs> that's come up with a game that's like for this. Sure. Every once in a while, they produce a bit of a gem. She gives you a smile, and uh, you can now add to your inventory a uh, note with Melissa's name there and her address in Oris Ren, if you ever need to uh, use it. All 
right. And for you, Arilla, what do you get up to? Uh, well, seeing Kidge flirt, I don't want to get in the way of that. So, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna follow Kalik and, uh, Edgar. Edgar. Okay. So, as those three head for the door, you've been flirting for the last little while during that round. Tidge, do you go with them? Uh, yeah. Okay. I guess. Arn, I will. Our nice guys. Our nice guys. Come on. <laughs> I okay. will extend my hand to hers to uh, and kiss her on hers if she'll let me, and I'll be like, I do hope to see you around the ship in the coming days. She gives you a smile, and she says, you'll probably see me. Great. And I'll give her another wink and uh, head out the door. Okay. She gives you a smile, and you rejoin with the rest, and soon everybody's out in the main hallway here. When the door opens, smoke billows out, and uh, you get like a a big waft of <laughs> fresh air, which is actually just stale, like, lower ship air, but after being in that room for so long, it's it's all relative. After, t or before Tidge, like, joins up with us, I'll, uh, kind of lean in close to Edgar, and I'll say, thank you for winning back that chain. I, I think it means more to uh, Tidge than he realizes. Well, I haven't given it back to you yet. I, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I laugh and I, I give it to him. <laughs> Here you go. Perhaps you should hold on to it. Give it to no. Titch when he's ready. I think it should come from you. <laughs> Titch makes his way over to the door and steps into the hall at this point. Then I'll I'll quickly pocket it. So. Okay, so he doesn't notice. Alright, ready to retire. I hope not, because uh, you're going to have to make me some money in the coming weeks. Oh. <laughs> and I just I'll start just, walking to the room. I'll just kind of <laughs> bust <laughs> through <laughs> the door. <laughs> a, a, a bit a bit liquored, you know, okay. just having a good time, not really worrying about noise levels. Yeah, you're feeling warm, and uh, the last, I'd say about two hours or so, you guys have been um, playing games constantly. The smoke in the room is, is very, like invigorating but uh kind of muting at the same time like it, it gives you a haze but for it keeps you kind of focused and you guys are feeling good even if you didn't partake in that kind of stuff um when you get over here annabelle you left during their last match so you've probably been in here alone for maybe like you know 20 minutes or so what are you up to are you already uh, like fast asleep or are you just kind of sitting in the corner or what's going on i'm pouting okay as you enter <laughs> edgar a pouting annabelle is over there in one end of the room Gradually, you guys get in here as well. I'll, I'll, I'll kind like, of stop, we... look at her, exhale heavily, and then just keep walking towards <laughs> the other end, like, not wanting to ruin my buzz going on right now. Like, oh. <laughs> You're like, I still got some travel beer. Nope, nope, nope. As we pass the captain's door, I'll be like, I really need gold. I... <sighs> no, I won't. Just look at the door for a second. <laughs> yeah. Arillo, come here. Bring that weapon of yours. All right. I'm just going to be like on my bunk drinking beer with Arillo while we're comparing weapons and checking it out. Mm, right. Comparing weapons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think he's got a halberd for a Goliath, so his is long and reaching. Mm -hmm, mm. Pointy at the end. Tough to reach spots. Whoa, okay, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll be talking battle yeah. shit. Sure. <clears throat> Tidge and Kaylin. I imagine, I imagine <laughs> like, it's probably some of, like, first time drinking. Sure. I'd be, like, a little woozy and just, like, uh, maybe I should sleep this off. Like, kind of reality is kind of sinking in, like, it's not a fairy tale. Mm. Like, shit happens. Like, I just lost money. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's not as, like, I didn't know what it's like to have negative gold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, after reading so many stories and stuff of just, like, good stuff happening to people, mm -hmm. this isn't really, I don't know, more of, like, a reality check, so I'll just look at Annie pouting, just kind of sigh, walk over to the bed, just kind of, like, plop down. Sure. 
So you can go ahead and put yourself in uh, your corner there. And Titch? I will take the hint there, and uh, I'll just kind of make my way to my room as well. Sure. It's late in the evening. Some of you are still working with a buzz, but for others, um, you know, depending on how amped you are, you might be feeling tired. Maybe you're still feeling energetic. If you guys have something you want to do aside from this, let me know. Are you guys going to just kind of long rest and fall asleep after a busy day? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Some of you collapse into your beds, feeling content, others less so, uh, but you all wake up the next day with a long rest. You can refresh whatever stuff you may have uh, lost or anything that comes back after that. Oh, sure. Goals? Does, does gold come back goals? overnight? Yeah. Gold does not reach <laughs> <laughs> Roll your gold um, <laughs> Can I? Now that he's got I compound to... interest on his side. I wanted to do something um, kind of sorry. private. Can I mm -hmm. can I uh, PM you? Oh sure. So uh, barring this PM, unless it's something that happens during the the late evening, so somebody wakes up with like a, a penis sharpied onto their cheek. <laughs> <laughs> I just tattoo it right on there. Yeah. A sharpie. <laughs> Permanent ink. You guys wake up the next day and uh, are feeling <coughs> nice and rested. Those of you who had a couple drinks um, probably didn't drink enough to get a hangover, so you're feeling good, and uh, whatever was being smoked in the room didn't have any sort of bad effects like that. You guys wake up and the sun is rising. On bottom leaf. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good day. <clears throat> I'll, uh... I'll be again uh, sitting in the in my bunk. I would have woken up early, you know, military shit, okay. and um, I would be writing in my book. Oh, I want somebody to roll luck for me, please. Not. Nah. I'll do it. I haven't rolled a luck roll. I'll roll the Falco die. It seems to do pretty well for me. Okay. Now that I said that, it's gonna give me shit. Thirteen. A thirteen. Okay. Uh, you guys wake up the next day feeling good. What do you want to do? <clears throat> Did you say that when I was in the room, somebody gave me a pipe, or they just gave me, like, a little bit of rolled up tobacco? No, they, they handed you tobacco and a clay pipe. Oh, okay. So, so you could have that in your inventory if you'd like. Um, clay pipes back in this time period were like uh, temporary things so you okay. use one for like a few weeks and then kind of just you know toss it out at the end gotcha so it's um, not something of value to anybody yeah like you know you could buy a clay pipe for maybe like two copper or something okay Mine. oh jesus okay all right I'll just go out and hang out on the upper deck for a little bit, not really doing anything in particular, just getting some fresh air. Sure. I've got my window open, getting that fresh air, too. You're not the only <laughs> one to be doing this. When you go up there, you find a group of three of the partygoers chit-chatting, and uh, they seem to be doing the same thing. Do you go and, and join them? Why not? You'd recognize all of their faces from the previous night, and... stuck. I need to fix that. Uh, you don't see your lady friend among them, but they're all familiar faces, and uh, it appears to be three guys, one of the merchants and like two really finely dressed folks, and uh, they just kind of look over at you and wave you uh, down, and when you join them, one of them goes, hey, uh, you want a drink? Is it free? Because that seems to be the only thing that I can handle these days. <laughs> oh right, that was oh, <laughs> yes. rough. Rough. No, it's... Don't worry about it. And uh, one of them hands over to you a, uh, a hot cup of tea, and they're all kind of drinking this and, and sort of looking over the side of the ship. <clears throat> Much obliged. Yes. Not a whole lot of luck last night, but I did have quite a bit of fun. One of them smiles and goes, that's good, that's good. You always get that, you know, sometimes the ship docks and you're down a few, sometimes you're up, but it's always a trip. That's for sure. And uh, <laughs> the four of you kind of sit there. It's obvious that the people here are like a little bit haggard. 
um, and they don't say a bunch, but the, it's it feels really nice to kind of be seated outside with the sun rising and like the cool breeze of the ocean kind of rushing along. Um, you also notice that off in the distance, now that you've kind of uh, sort of sailed a bit further away from shore and are in more of the ocean proper, that you can see the storm wall off in the distance, which is like the portion of ocean which is always filled with like, you know, like thunderclouds or heavy winds or something along those lines and right now it looks very overcast over there so you have like this duality of one side it's like the sun's rising over there and on the other it's like kind of you know grim and stormy it's it's a it's a good scene okay um at that seeing that i would uh excuse myself from the company of these these guys and uh head back down and go get Arillo if he's see if he's awake if not I'll rouse him sure <clears throat> so Arillo are you up uh, uh, yes wake up I've got something I think you'll be interested in seeing come with me what up to this? the deck just follow me All right. up to the deck alright I, I will follow you then when you get to the upper deck uh, you see the sun rising off in one direction, but over in a different one, you notice what looks to be a huge storm off in the distance, hanging over a expanse of water. Massive clouds and like swirling winds, lightning raining down. Are you familiar um, with the storm wall? Uh, yes, actually, I am. Oh, well. Here I was thinking that I'd be giving you a lesson, but I guess you wouldn't be the Storm Herald if you didn't know what the Storm Wall was. Have you ever seen it before? I have not. But you can uh, give, you can tell me more about it. I haven't really... I don't know too much, but you can tell me... So you've really like just it. heard of it. Well, it's basically just... As, I, as I've come to understand it, it's just a perpetual storm, and it just... Ravages like that all the time. Thought you might be impressed seeing the yes. work of your god. Or what Will I, I assume would be his work. Can I hear the thunder? Also, is it talking to me? Ah. Let's see. I'd say that the thunder is distant enough that you can barely hear rumbles of it off in the distance. All right. As far as whether or not the storm speaks words to you, no, you don't get anything like that. But it is a magnificent sight, and it's nothing like what you've seen on land. This dwarfs that easily. Mm hmm. This is pretty impressive. I thought you might appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much for showing me this. Yes. Now, the other, onto perhaps more important things, is, uh, I honestly, I anticipated doing a little better last night, but uh, I guess that wasn't quite my game, despite how fascinating it was. I do intend to pay you back, and though this uh, <laughs> this uh, trip may not seem, the promise of gold doesn't seem too strong. I'll find a way, and don't, uh, and, and I do intend to take you to these shrines. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but I, with, as far as the gold goes, I wouldn't focus on it too heavily. I mean, I would like to be paid back in time, but I'm not hard. I'm not yearning for ca for yes. uh, gold. So, well, I appreciate you saying that. Well, I do honestly. There are some things that weigh a bit heavier on my mind. That's still there. Indeed. I'm not much of a... I'm a pretty patient Goliath. That's fortunate. <laughs> I've heard some scary things about your people. Whether they're true or not remains to be seen, but... Uh... I'm sure most of it is. <laughs> Gods, I hope not. <laughs> no, they're... We're pretty... Well, I wouldn't... I imagine like normal most races, there here. are differences between tribes and race... and. Uh, cultures oh yes I All used right, to have an odd no I used to have an odd friend but uh, oh, we'll talk about that another time 
You guys sit there and stare out uh, off the boat at this huge storm raging in the distance. And down in the lower deck, the other three gradually wake a couple of tieflings and a human man over the corner. What do you guys want to do? Um, well, I want to go to, like, the galley and to see how the shitty food is made and possibly pick up... I possibly pick up a few uh, skills okay. by watching them. Uh, I'd actually be feeling hungry too, so I'm gonna be getting up and seeing if uh, and maybe wood chip breakfast is served. Yeah. It's on the main deck that you guys meet with the rest, and a group <clears throat> of sailors seem to be involved in the uh, practice of getting you guys food. Now, as they do so. You guys note that while you show up here to get the food, um, only a couple people from the uh, um, the lower decks, like from last night's party, show up. In fact, the three that are out there, you know, drinking tea that you had spoken with Titch, they don't even bother to go and get the food. They, they just kind of hang on the side and continue just chit-chatting. Um, the food seems to consist of basically gruel with nothing in it, right? It's like oatmeal without sugar or... or um, not even a dash of salt, nothing like that. And I'm gonna roll luck here. Um, a sailor comes over and gives you the regrettable news that no fish were caught, and uh, this is it for today. Do you guys uh, I'll eat be taking flavorless oatmeal. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I would be used to it, kind of. Um, okay. Yeah, times be... monk would be like that. Yeah, but I'm going to be taking a third of my ration and kind of sprinkling it in, you know, like jerky or whatever to kind of make it a little more palpable. Sure, roll luck. <laughs> luck? <Yep. laughs> okay. I'm worried. Uh, Welfare Wednesday seems appropriate for this. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, is it ever. Uh, yeah, you put the two together and it's like... It's like having both, but neither of them have been enhanced. <laughs> you're just like, ah. Oh, well. It's like having rice and mashed potatoes. Together. Yeah, you're just like, well, this uh... isn't exciting. Anymore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's That's not rice, it's not mashed potatoes, but it's I know. Not, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where they're both good individually, just not good together at I mean, all. It's not like real horde. It's not like mustard and smarties or nothing, but like, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's not helping anything. And, I would uh, try it. I would try it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, Edgar, you're up on the top deck getting food. Uh, Annabelle's there as well. Kalik, are you headed up to get food? Uh, no, I'm just gonna sleep in. Sure, okay. So you sleep in. Um, now, while you guys are there getting food, at some point, you notice that the door opens, and what looks to be uh, a dwarf steps out uh, onto the main deck here. And unlike the rest of the people here, who seem to be, um, you know, Kind of like you guys, where they're wearing more or less their casual clothes, or if they do have um, uh, some armor on, it's because they're one of the sailors with you know, a bit of leather here and there. This guy steps out, and he's wearing like full splint mail. He's got like an axe on each side there. His helmet is like on at the moment, and he comes up, and he just turns over, and like in really shitty common, he just says five, please, <laughs> and uh, the guy kind of like you know hands him a bunch of bowls. And Sorry, is this the, the dwarf? Yeah, yeah, he, he turns okay, to the okay. sailor, it's just like, five, please, and then just takes the bowls and then turns to leave. Do you guys can, I, can I shout something in Dwarvish? Sure, yeah. Friend, mind some company? He pauses for a second and looks over, and he speaks in Dwarvish. I'll, and be, he goes, I'll be grinning, yeah. <laughs> he says, uh, someone who knows the good tongue, fuck me. Haven't, uh, haven't had uh, the good company of some dwarves in quite some time. He looks around, he says, We're not seafaring. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> and I'll kind of let out a chuckle. And uh, he gives you just like a, not a solemn nod, but like a, a respect kind of nod, and then turns and leaves with the food. I'll... Can I insight that to see if Go that means, it. like, a cue to, like, follow him, I mm -hmm. guess? Um, 
Chitlin 3. Oh, you slut. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I could still follow him. Seven? Uh, you don't know either way if he means for you to follow him or not. Because he doesn't say anything. He just gives you a nod and then turns and starts to walk off. I'll kind of take that as um, a dwarvish invite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get up and start following him. Okay, Fuck sure. It. Worst case, he says no, right? Uh, at that, uh, you know, he's headed down the stairs and you join him. And uh, when he gets to the door there, he taps on the door and somebody opens it and he steps in. And uh, when that happens, you see that the dwarf opening the door is also fully armed, like heavy armor, weapons at hand, and he bars you from entering. And uh, he says, who's this? And I'm speaking in dwarvish to the other one. And he's, <laughs> the other one says, oh, some guy up on the top deck. <laughs> And uh, he kind of, like, looks back at you, and he goes, Well, what do you want? And he says that in common to you. And again, I'll it's I'll, not impressive. It's like... I'll, I'll respond in Dwarvish. I was just looking to see what you guys were doing, where you were from, just to have some good company. But um, I'm seeing things have been a little sour in this room. One of them looks to you, and he says, and it's another one who kind of like steps up towards the door, and he too is very well armed, and he says, our business is our own, unless we've got a lot of gold. That's kind of relative, what's a lot? You're talking to a noble here, so... A thousand or more on you. I'll give him, um, like... What a a playful fuck you insult would be in Dwarvish. Like, ah, I can't do that. And um, I'll start walking off then. Fuck those guys. Okay. One of them kind of gives you a nod, closes the door afterwards. Um, you had seen for a brief moment, looking in there, that uh, their room was much like yours and everything. However, they were all like that. Even the ones seated there, like, clearly with the utensils out, ready to eat this mishmash, like... Decked to the nines, ready for combat. Well, I'm still armored, so whatever the fuck is coming, I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll go back up and uh, meet up with the, the guys and uh, start eating. Okay, guys sure. and gal. You get up there. It seems that everyone's here except for Kalik, who must be sleeping in or up to something else on the ship. <laughs> he doesn't seem to show up here. Strange enough got that the, he's the one the that needs to four eat. Pouties. <laughs> uh, but everybody else from your group is here as well as some people from uh, the party group um, though you know you guys are either with them or to the side of them it's your choice you can eat on different parts of the ship too if you want I'd I'd say I'd be eating with them just chatting about the uh, the event sure. and whatnot do you guys just mingle with the group mm -hmm. okay. I'd be I'd be like in a serious social deficit since the fucking Elos um Sanctuary. So. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most, like, 99% of priests don't party very hard. <laughs> there's, like, that one temple, and, you know, you're not supposed to go there anyway. But uh, uh, these guys, you know, they're they're pleased to hang out with you, and uh, they seem, you know, like the others, a little bit haggard. They probably stayed up a bit later than you guys did, uh, but just eating this gruel and everything, um, you know, they chit-chat with you and, and such. you guys have any plans for the day? Or anything that you want to ask them specifically, or whatnot? I'd probe them about the dwarves. I'm pretty sure that they know absolutely fuck all, but... <laughs> Bro. Just kind of oh. asking them, uh, probe, uh, you know, three knuckles deep probe. <laughs> Roll um, a luck check. If you get an 11 or higher, one of them will know something. Can I get a plus one per knuckle? <laughs> <laughs> no. There you go, hey, 14. I thought it was going to land on that 5, and I was like, you're going to need a whole fist! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, one of them turns to you, and notably, it's the uh, the gentleman there who is a uh, a merchant type. He's got that, that sort of garb to him. And he also looks like he might be from the deserts. He has, like, you know, a head wrapping and everything, the very loose-fitting robes. 
a lot of gold and jewelry on him in different spots. And he turns to you and says, Oh, those guys selling things. And he gives you like a knowing nod. Expensive wares. Mm hmm. Talking Marshall. Well, clothing, luxury. Uh, this term is one that you guys will know, as it is part of legend, but he tells you that they are apparently selling sovereign stones. And he says, saw them with my own eyes. Beautiful things, but... Oh. Not the kind of business that I usually deal in. Hmm. And I'll kind of lean back and just uh, put my, uh, like, a hand to my chin and like, hmm, hmm. What's so great about silver and stones? Uh, one of them turns to you and tells you the, uh, the legend. And he tells you that the magical items of this world come from three main sources. Um, one is the gods, if they decide to gift mortals with something divine. Another is those made by the High Elves, who once ruled over almost all of the world and the technology they once had. But the third, which is the one that um, still happens and is not of godly control, are Sovereign Stones, which are mined from the deeps by the dwarves, and they socket them, basically, into different items to form magical items. Very rare and difficult to get a hold of. How much is one of these stones? Uh, another one turns towards you and he says, Thousand, maybe. But it is uh, sometimes negotiable, the dwarves. Depends. Those ones down lower decks don't exactly seem like they kind to uh, negotiate much. <laughs> no. Can attest to that. Tapped on the door, asked if they wanted to play. One of them looked like he was going to break my kneecaps, so I turned away. And uh, I don't think I'll be going back. Maybe if I win enough, huh? And he kind of gives like a smile and then looks at you, Edgar, and he says, But if you're at the table, I might just pass. <laughs> well, you know, after I've won so much of your money, maybe I'll invite you down while I purchase one of these things myself. <laughs> oh, a kind gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, Gavold, shalom. Uh, you cannot do this to my family. Incredible. Oh my god. Picturing the three finger. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Could be interesting lead for us, guys. Wait, and I'll look to the rest of the group. You were saying that you were looking for work, right? Right. The... Well, <laughs> you think that they're offering work? The word um, work now just means <laughs> prostitution. I just every time somebody <laughs> says that, I just that is like a self-insert, and I, I chuckled myself. Well, Tidge, um, I think it would depend on who's asking and how, but a group like that either has the good sense of knowing a few extra bodies could help and defending whatever they're carrying as cargo. If they're too proud to need any form of, of help, or they look at, well, let's be honest, everyone but Arillo and I and think that you're not worth the hassle, uh, could be worth seeing if maybe there's something else we could offer. You and Kalik, between the two of you, have a uh, pretty good wealth of knowledge, it seems. They could be in the, in, you know, the market for information. Just a question of opening a dialogue with them, figuring out what they need. Well, you're the one with the most experience, so <clears throat> with them, anyways. So the I've only I've seen met, one. Yeah, the dwarves I've met are a bit friendlier than those bunch in general. Although, being sour assholes is seems to be a genetic trait of theirs, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, yeah. Here's the thing. Unless we pursue this fairly aggressively, they're not going to come to us. They're coming here up for food and that's it. And, uh, yeah. They're clearly not comfortable out at sea. So we know their destination. We know what they're carrying. We could figure out what they're up to. What? 
what do you think they might be up to? Because it, I mean, at least to me, it seems pretty cut and dry. Well, I mean, if they're if they're moving other... sovereign stones through the sea on a ship like this, I mean, they could have had a larger crew. They could have picked a nicer ship. Uh, and why even go across the land? Why go away from where they're going to sell them? Now, These while you guys are talking about sea. this, do you do this within earshot of the partygoers, or pull the group aside for a group huddle? I guess I would pull aside for a group huddle. Okay. Like, I would start the conversation, and then kind of, like, gesture people to move away. So you're not on the lower I'd deck, be... but you, you guys kind of move a little bit away. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> so... Yeah, I mean, you have to ask yourself why dwarves choose a ship, this ship, and choose this mode of transportation. It's just, again, I'm not overly suspicious, but these are questions <laughs> that, that... That sounded that hella mind. suspicious. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking call that one out right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... There's some things that don't really add up, you know? I mean, I guess it seems that, uh, I mean, I'm not sure whether or not there have been reports of pirates out on these seas or not, but how long have we been sailing so far? Like a day or two now? Uh, you have been sailing for like a day and a half. You, you had okay. hopped on. Um, it's, it's early in the morning, so yeah. Yeah. Look. So. Do me a favor, Tidge, Kalik, Annabelle, you might be able to, to help me out on this. Tidge and Kalik, maybe you can rack your brain, see if there's any threats around, any reason to move high value items. Annabelle, maybe you can uh, go see the captain and see if uh, he seems to be fond of you. You can just maybe, he might be willing to share more information than with us about those dwarves. And uh, I can go sit down with them, offer them protection up front, see if they bite. If not, try to get a feel for uh, what they might need, if not that. Annie's going to look skeptical at him. That, I, that the captain didn't take too kindly to all of the interruptions that we had in our conversation yesterday. So I don't know <laughs> if he's going to be too keen on the idea of talking to me alone. Okay, well, you know best. So I could if, try. It doesn't if, hurt to try. That's what I'm thinking. And if Tidge and Kalik up here are busy, there are no disturbances down there. The door off in the distance opens, and you guys see the captain step up. He looks over at your group, gives you guys kind of a look, gives you a, a wave, waves to the party goers, and then heads over towards the uh, the wheel. He doesn't take it from the person who is currently working the wheel, but they seem to be talking about something. It looks kind of like, like they're a talking shop. And a bunch of other I'll kind of go there and everything. I'll whisper to Annabelle right on cue. She's gonna like push on him a little bit. Yeah, I get it. Great. Hey, look, it's a suggestion. If you wanna, I'll be honest with you, Annabelle. I don't know what your talent is, but if you're a bartender, I know bartenders are good at making talk. You know, it doesn't have to be the captain. I'm just looking for work. Look, you were saying you need money to feed, to feed Kalik, <laughs> right? And I'll look at her super honestly right now. Um, so you're looking for work. We need pay. People moving that kind of merchandise can pay us. I, if whatever skills you have, if you want to start getting some information against, not against, but about those dwarves down there, they're going to be tight-lipped. So anything we can go in there with, it'll be a sign of respect. They'll know that we're capable. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to start negotiations on a bit of a better foot. She's going to give him oh, sorry, like a, a skeptical look and and raise an eyebrow, kind of cock her head a little bit. Right now, so when you're talking about work, <laughs> you're, are you talking about work or are you talking about work? Because there seems to be several definitions that I wasn't quite sure on yesterday. Tidge, do you have a Viet Cong flashback? Yep. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll look at her, and I won't think it means prostitution, but um, I'll look at her and say, look, when I told you there were gradients of dishonest work, I really did mean that. 
and I would never, ever, ever, ever suggest that you go down that road. You seem like you're willing to, 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 to put in the hard work and effort. So you know, let's, uh, <laughs> let's just say that uh, you can maybe gather some information and uh, see where we go from there. I'm sorry. I'm paying attention. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll I'll see what I can do. Cool. cool and then, cool, 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 cool. um, she'll like. Oh wait, is there a stairway up to the, the wheel? wheel? Yep. Okay. So I kind of like stand on the stairs and wait for an opportunity to talk to the captain. Um, wait for him to finish his conversation with his uh, sure. person. Uh, Kaelic, are you still sleeping in? Um, what time is it at this point? Uh, you know. Uh, early morning has passed, now it's just morning, maybe like 8, 9-ish. Uh, I'll take out one of my books and just start reading. Okay. Just passing time. Uh, there's nothing pressing I need to do. Yeah. Up on the top deck... Oh, and it's also worth noting that you hear playing in the other room. Um, up on the top deck, uh, the captain eventually comes down the steps here. He doesn't seem to have anybody with him, and he's got a scroll in his hands that he's looking at. And when he gets onto the step, you know, he, he pauses and goes, Oh, uh, um, Annabelle, how are you? I, I'm well, thank you for asking. Say, uh, I was wondering if, if it doesn't impose on your schedule and if you're not still upset about yesterday and how things played out, if you had time to talk to me perhaps later. Alone. <laughs> Let's see here. I would like you to make a luck roll to see if the captain is at all on board with this, given everything that's happened. Fucking net twenty. Where are you? A seven. Great. Great. Uh, he looks at you for a second there, and he says, um, "Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can talk um, later this evening." I got your note. Thank you. Uh, he kinda, I'll be you know, seeing you. He gives you a smile and then walks past and uh, opens up the door. I'd like you to make an insight check. Insight. Wait, so you guys roll funny. How do you do that? Hold the die and toss it across the way. Oh, you no, mean the, they... the weirdo roll? Yeah, this oh, is like... Press okay. R. Yeah, just press Sacrilege roll? Yeah. It's wrong. <laughs> hey, I got back to back not twenties. It's all about it. <laughs> it's, it's devil worship. What did you want me to <laughs> insight, please? Roll... Insight. Uh... I have. It's just a st straight thirteen. No mod. Straight thirteen. Okay. Uh, you can tell that the captain's got a couple things on his mind when he walks by, and he doesn't tell you everything, but does tell you to meet him um, later on in the evening, kind of gives a smile and wanders off. But yeah, you can tell it's like, it's not a completely, I guess, genuine smile, I suppose. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and he disappears down into the lower deck. Now, at that point, uh, what do you want to do? And uh, it's worth mentioning that though you couldn't hear them with the sound of the waves and, you know, across the ship, um, you guys would be able to see that uh, after a brief conversation by the steps there, the captain kind of, you know, wandered by and went down into the lower deck. What do I want to do? Sure, anybody. Or what do they want to do? Okay, I will go and rejoin them. Okay. He said we could talk later. He seemed a little busy, preoccupied with other issues that might be going on. Okay. So I didn't want to trouble him right away. Look, uh, you probably know people better than Tij and Kalik at least, so follow your gut on that. Me, I'm going to go down and knock on a door of some very, very heavily dwarves, so. Is that a good idea? Can I 
never saw him ever again. But yeah. I can ne and I'm I start walking away when she asks me. I can never tell. And uh I'll head downstairs. Okay. Wandering downstairs, you eventually get over towards the dwarves door and uh there's still talk in dwarvish from the other side. Uh but it seems to have been muted and replaced partially with the sound of uh, clinking cutlery and, and eating. I'll, um, I'll kind of like let other people do their thing and fast forward until like maybe an hour from now when they maybe have finished eating. Sure, yeah, yeah. Do you just want to like wander back into the room or do you pace the hallway or what's up? I'll go into my room and uh, just like, I'm going to probably go over my equipment and just make sure I, I'm as well equipped and imposing as possible you know i want to make sure that i look ready for war just as they are as a sign of respect if they're gonna take me seriously okay I if i see they, if i see him time. fiddling with this stuff a lot i'll peek my head over and ask what he's doing sure <sighs> posturing is what my brother would say for what you don't expect to go into battle, do you? In a matter of speaking, yeah, I do. <laughs> With who? Kayla poops his pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some very well-equipped dwarves. <laughs> dwarves? And I'll, uh... I'll you know, the, the about greedy, this I'll high. say those greedy bastards. Oh. Oh. Wow, okay. You you can't just say that, Kaylee. <laughs> now, it's worth mentioning. I'm, I'm that sorry, it's a joke it's a joke. <laughs> this is a this is a common um like perception of dwarves, which is that they're you know, they're self centered and, and kinda of care about money if anything. And, uh, those who would be more in the know would be aware that, you know, they have clans and family that they care for and everything. Now, it's just if you're a stranger on the doorstep they're Really not shy about telling you to fuck off, and that's got them around, like a rep throughout the years. Yeah, so here you are stereotyping like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, yeah, you, you can't just say it like that. Okay, like I understand this. Just a joke. You should probably work on your humor. Annabelle probably. is nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'll ke I'll just keep uh, just like making sure my shit's ready to go. Okay. And uh, yeah. Do you mind? Uh, you mind if I tag along? I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> um. Here's the thing, Tidge. Uh, I'd like you to make a history check, please, Edgar. Sure, I'm proficient in that. God damn it, fucking Cretan. You gotta roll well eventually, right? Nope. Hey, oh, that's janked! janked. <laughs> Woo! Roll badly again! Ah! Hey! <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know what to expect. Four? Okay, I got nothing for you. Continue on. Look, I, uh... I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, it's nothing personal, but, uh... Last, last night, you were saying, get out there, meet people. Here you are, going to meet people. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, but the angle I'm going to be working requires me to be... to have some modicum of intimidation going on. And bringing someone who has no life experience and no <laughs> martial experience might not send the message I'm looking for, if you know what I mean. We'll have plenty of opportunities to get life experience. I just, this is something I can't mess up. Fair enough. And that that's coming from like, uh, like Edgar's trying to be polite, but he seriously doubts Calix's abilities so far. So he's just gonna kind of feel like he's ready and. Uh, once time goes by, I'll uh, head over to the dwarves. Sure. During this time, while this equipment's happening and uh, all the chit-chat, what are you three up to? Just kind of sitting around eating, or do you guys do anything special? Oh, uh, uh, I'm just going to be eating, because I don't know of anything special to do. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I'll be honest, guys. I don't quite know what he's trying to get at. <laughs> don't either. I don't know what he wants us to do. I'm supposed to talk to the captain, but don't know what I'm supposed to talk to him about. Dwarves. Get a little bit of information. Maybe we should have clarified before we agreed to do it. <laughs> probably, probably been a good idea. <laughs> did, did we agree to do it, or did he just kind of... It, it seemed more like he just kind of walked away. <laughs> it was more like, this is what we're doing, and... Yeah. <laughs> we're pimping ourselves out to dwarfs. <laughs> At least that's right. the impression that I got. I mean... I don't know about you guys. To be honest, I don't think we're going to be terribly successful, so it might be interesting to go down to the bottom of the stairs and see what happens. <laughs> Should we go observe? I but would like to. Testing. It is. I can translate if he's going to talk in Dwarvish again. That would be <laughs> funny to watch. All right, then let's go. <laughs> but everybody be quiet, so they don't know we're there. <laughs> you guys head down, oh, right. and at this point, as, uh, Edgar... As Edgar leaves, I'll, yeah, I'll tell say he goes for the door. Dwarvish. I'll, uh, I'll pause when I hear the Dwarvish, and I'll look over. You know the tongue? In Dwarvish, I'll say, I do. Alright then, come along. Just grin to myself and just trail him. Now you guys are going down the steps to go and find out what's going on with Edgar, right? Where are the dwarves? Is it across from us yeah. or Okay, it's over here. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> You get to the door, and it sounds like the eating has stopped. Um, they're not really chatting too much, but uh, you can tell they're still in there. Their footsteps aren't exactly light. All right. Know anything about dwarves before you go in? I've read plenty. What have you read? Which 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 kind of dwarves are you dealing with? Skyfall, native. Uh, are I would assume they are a little bit more friendly, if there is such a thing. I kind of shake my head side to side. Uh... Look, I mean, compared um, to their counterparts. Their, them being on a ship shows that they are in fact different. Small offenses, especially from strangers, go a long way. Don't pry too much. Carry yourself with good, some good posture. Don't feel too threatened. Don't show any fear. I think we should be okay. Oh. And I'll, I'm not even going to let him, like, absorb the information. I'll, I'll do a heavy knock on the Dwarvish door. And, um, I'll say before they even answer, business then. In Dwarvish, I assume? Yeah. The door opens, and a Dwarvish man stands in the way, barring you entry. He looks up, says, You've got the gold, then? I'd like to talk business, but not purchase. He kind of gives you like a once-over. He looks you up and down, stares at your equipment for a moment, and uh, kind of looks over I'll, at Kalik behind you. Having prepared this uh, while I was getting ready, I'll take out my writ um, showing my noble heritage, uh -huh. and I'll hand it off to him. Interesting. Alright, so so far he said business, he's not buying anything. <laughs> he just wants you guys to talk. Just watch it from the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> As people walk by, like, what the fuck are those guys doing? <laughs> Confused sailors. Um, now, he looks at this, and uh, he calls over another one, and they kind of look at it, and then he hands you back the paper. He says, Okay, noble. Business, but not purchase. What are you getting at? Look, I know that you have some cargo. I know it's worth protecting, and I know that letting two strangers into the room, even with what you're packing, and I look them up and down, 
isn't something you're too keen on. The group I'm with, we're looking for work. Whether it's adding some security to the group, or there's something else you guys have in mind, we're all ears. We're capable. Oh. And uh, we could Close. certainly lend some hand. That's a maid. And if things go well, we are in the market for what you're carrying. Not ready for purchase yet, but with the, the rate we've been acquiring wealth as of late, could be in the near future. This group works alone. No need any friends. Equipped. Looking to buy, and I want to see the gold. Doesn't sound like you are. Now, normally I tell somebody to get lost at this point. I can tell from your papers you're uh, important to these other humans. So, uh, we'll be in that capital for a while if you get the gold then. That's all I'm telling you. A good day. Fair enough. And he kind of gives you a nod and then closes the door. Well, great work there, Kalik. Uh, we didn't get killed. <laughs> like I said, I'd keep my mouth shut. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll kind of... I'm not making um, any effort here to, to, to shush myself, you know. Uh, I want to have them know that I'm not too intimidated. All right. Well, um, I guess back to the group. We'll have to find another lead for work. But, uh, hey, if we're uh, in the market for Sovereign Stones in the next couple of weeks... Um, We'll know that they'll be in the capital. What can you tell me about Sovereign Stones as I walk down the hall? Uh, how much would I know? Sovereign Stones. Uh, make an Arcana check, please. Sure. <clears throat> For the love of God, roll the offhand. Roll the nope. fucking offhand. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll roll the offhand. He wasn't very successful. They were only interested in selling. Oof, that was man. a close one. That was a close Ooh, one. Ar Arcana is... Uh, plus five. Okay. Twenty-two. You know that the Sovereign Stones come in multiple types and seem to have uh, sway over all sorts of things, whether it be schools of magic or forms of elements, things like that. Um, their properties get quite strange. and You know about a few of them. You kind of detail Edgar on them. Um, you also know I that imagine. there's... Sorry, what's that? I imagine I'd like riddle off a textbook word for word thing. Sure. About uh, it. You would also know from your, your reading that they're uh they're very visibly uh, obvious. Like uh you know, they look like a good gem from a distance, but when you're once you're holding it, you can actually see that it's magical once it's in your grasp. And uh, there's usually like moving parts or strange effects to them. And there's uh there's believed to be like a couple dozen types out there. So the dwarves seem to find new ones every uh, couple hundred years. Now, as you guys are wandering down there, uh, your group is approaching the group that is currently on the steps. Uh, what are you guys doing? Chilling. Okay, so you don't make any effort to yeah. move, and eventually, uh, when you guys kind of get further down the way, are you going into either of these rooms? Uh, no, I'd just be walking all the way up deck again. Yeah. You eventually find your group nonchalantly hanging out by the stairs. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Where, where are you successful in your endeavor? Uh, struck out on work, but uh, at least uh, they're aware of us as uh, potential buyers for uh, Sovereign Stone, so not sure if you guys are going to be able to scrounged together more than a few coppers over the last the next couple of weeks but uh, if we uh, come into some money those are the type of things that we definitely want if we're going to be doing this on a more regular basis and, and if this high librarian we're talking to is legit and needs more speaking of he gives you plenty of information he wouldn't happen to bankroll Our relationship doesn't quite work that way. I figured as much. He gives me certain other boons. 
Okay. Well, I'm going to be okay. You guys are looking for work. I don't have any leads, so best of luck. And I'll just kind of all the way up and uh, kind of hang out, get sure. some fresh air. I'd be, I, I'd sit there, maybe chit chat on the steps for a second, and then be like, oh, remember Sovereign Chase Edgar. Sure. I'm just gonna go follow. Well, actually, I'd stay with uh, Tijin then. Okay. Because I'm still mad at Caleb. <laughs> Three of you are left Get on the steps. Over. Has there been any activity around the stairs going down? Uh, like while we've the been occasional on the ship? sailor goes up and down the steps, um, but that's about it. Like, you, you know, you see somebody who goes um, from the downstairs ones, uh, comes over, undoes the lock on the door and grabs something, comes out, locks the door, heads back down, that sort of thing. Is there any indication that that area might be off limits? Ah, um, the captain had told you that that's where the crew are. Um, oh. at the beginning. And he said, you know, there's there's no reason to go down there, he said. So, take from that what you will. Now, as you look over, you don't see, like, an employees-only sign or yeah. anything, but... <laughs> it's up so, to you guys if you want to try and go. It doesn't appear to be locked, it's just a downward stair. So the captain said, not that there's really no reason to go down there, but he's got a weird way, or a weird understanding of words as far as I <laughs> So far as I've been able to tell, so that that could totally mean just go and uh, chat with some interesting folk. What do you guys think? Are you suggesting that we venture down stairs? Yes. Yeah. Uh... Oh, I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> that are you not so keen on that idea? Because really, oh. I can't think of anything else better to do. What's the worst that could happen? It could kick us out, that's about it. Well, yeah. that's a lie. We could die. That's true. Could throw us overboard <laughs> for trespassing on properties we're not supposed to. I don't know. Yeah, I've never gone swimming, so I don't know how I'd be at that. If you <laughs> like don't want to rock. go, just say so. No, we can go. Alright. Then, let's go. All right, I will gonna... start making my way down. I'll follow, I'll follow the leader that, you know. Okay. You make your way down and find a very long hallway, much like your own. It's a, uh, it's similar to the previous deck, but the hallway is much tighter. It's like a, you know, a single to maybe two people file, whereas yours is almost about twice as much. And down the way, you can see a number of different rooms. There's a whole bunch of doors. And there's a whole bunch of people who are dressed like the sailors who are kind of milling about there in the uh, the lower hallway. You know, there's a couple of people immediately at the bottom of the stairs who are talking about something, and uh, your presence kind of interrupts him. Like, you know, he's going along and he's like, "So I says to him, you putting rocks in this bread? What the fuck?" And then he just like kind of looks over at you as you step down. And he goes, "Oh, sorry, no, this isn't uh, um, this isn't for uh, passengers." Oh, well, excuse I must have gotten turned about. I don't know what happened. Maybe a little too too much rockets last night. Rocks in your bread, though. That's a bit strange. He just kind of, like, looks at you for a second. <laughs> All right. Point taken. I'll head back upstairs. <laughs> you're, you're walking away and you hear them keep going. He's like, so I says to him. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Right, they didn't take too kindly to the interruption. Well, truly. Now, despite the fact that the lower deck must be smaller than the deck that you're on, where the bulk of the ship is, there were a lot of doors down there in that hallway. So who knows exactly what's going on. But uh, yeah, you guys kind of realize that this is a, an awkward spot and kind of step away. And before long, you're back in your main hall. Well, that was a great adventure. <laughs> sure. Let's go on another sometime. Hopefully, it'll be a little more thrilling than that one. 
I suppose but, it could have been a little more thrilling should we pushed the matter and continued on, despite uh, their warning. Perhaps we can do that at a time when there's a little less observation. Yeah, it's not, I'm not saying that I want to do that, I'm just saying that we could have done it. I'll be honest, I'm having a bit of trouble reading you. <laughs> it's okay. Must be off my game. <laughs> Nigga, you don't have a game! <laughs> sorry, Twitch. <laughs> oh, sorry, Twitch. Oh, oh. Jesus. It just, oh, so it just sorry. slipped by. So oh, sorry, so sorry. Uh... This, I said the Snickers don't have a game. <laughs> Snickers. Alright. Uh, then I'm probably... Well, I mean, I wanted to go to the galley to, to maybe, uh... Because I worked in a bar, right? So I should have some knowledge on cooking. Maybe I can give him some pointers or learn something. Sure. How to okay. how to make my rations last longer. Okay. So you guys head back up to the top deck, and uh, there, both Kalik and Edgar are. Uh, what have you guys been up to during that time? Talk about sovereign stone. Sovereign stone. Sovereign stone. Dirty up. Okay. They're super awesome, and you guys wish you could get a hold of them, but uh, yeah, they're not cheap. Uh, given that the dwarf wanted you to have at least a thousand just to talk. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. Though, uh, you know, Edgar was raking in the gold last night. You know, maybe if you just keep up at that. A couple more nights like that. Yeah. <laughs> half of it was mine. Surely his luck won't run out. Yeah, half of the... Half of it? <laughs> I'd, be so, I'd be 15 coin richer right now if I didn't have to pay for you. Oh, my God. Uh, eventually the door opens, <laughs> I... and while you guys are nerding out, uh, the group returns. I still think we could have taken him, Edgar. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> I look at him just jaw jawed to the floor practically. It was a fucking joke. Gotta work on that, man. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> <sighs> well, I guess it's a, it's a dream Sovereign Stones at this point, but... At least we have contacts. Well, <laughs> at least we spoke to them for ten seconds. How about you guys? We took a venture down to the Lord. That can got kicked out right away. Exciting, it was th thrilling. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, um, look, I don't think there's going to be much opportunity for work then on this ship so I'll see you guys tonight probably if you guys have some more coin to gamble could be fun unlikely I might I don't mind watching table but... talk I want to know does anybody here have any fucking gold other than Edgar I have uh, one gold piece I have nope. four silver <laughs> stuff Mike did I give you my gold or no uh, no. I was, I was... you gave him the three and then you got one I gave that him. yeah 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 okay so, oh that's I just wanted I to be sure too. I think you guys are currently the most broke party in Skyfall. Woo! <laughs> yeah, no, I got nothing. That's Woo. why we should be called Welfare Wednesday, but Hell yeah. no, nobody <laughs> wants to go with that. We'll be rich one day, that's why. You think It'll so? Happen. You think so? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm on my way there. <laughs> <laughs> right, do we have a plan? We reach. Oh, Fair Wednesday does sound pretty fitting. Well, uh, talk to uh, talk to the man who speaks to gods. Aris Don't Ren. you speak to gods? What makes you think that? That's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> figured as much. I mean, I, I mean, you're to... always you're always talking about this metric guy. Yeah. In order to sign a contract under oath, someone who follows their word is bond. Metri is a common god. Arex doesn't really speak. <laughs> He's pretty quiet. But he does <laughs> bork on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bork, bork. Bork, bork, bork. <sighs> right, no game plan? Well, I mean, as other than hightailing it to the mountains, Right, that temple of Woj, or the ruins of Woj, uh, not... they're on the back burner. 
last week's that they are. Mm. Okay, well, we're gonna need supplies. I don't know what your plan is to get some money, but I, I came to a dead end, and I'll be honest with you, it's not really in my set of skills to, well, create gold out of thin air. I kind of had a family to do that. I think that our options are a bit shallow on this ship as far as making any sort of money since... I, I agree, yeah. Perhaps we can find some sort of notice board. Can we get... I don't know. I mean, we can see if... Mm, perhaps not. I'll have to think on that one. I forget right. I said anything right now. All right, expedition leader, lead the way. Was that sarcasm? Tibbs looks at the yes. gaslight. <laughs> uh-huh. mm. <laughs> I'll kind of yawn it. All right, well, as thrilling as this conversation is, I'm going to head down below deck, catch some sleep, maybe a little afternoon nap, hopefully fast forward this ship a little. And I'll head downstairs wondering why I referred to a VCR in D&D. <laughs> Question we all want to know. Okay, so you go ahead and step away, and soon find yourself back in the room there. Lay down on the little cot that you've got. But the rest of you have business for the day until later. Nope. Mm, um, nope. Nope, not Fine. until I can meet with the captain, but I, want, I still want to know if I've learned anything. In the galley. In the galley. Ah! You learn that the sailors know basically nothing. You, you know, um... Oh, that's great. What, what is that trope with, like, uh, bachelors or whatever, and it's like they just survive off of, like, ramen noodles? They're like, yeah, you put it in the microwave, right? And then it comes out and you can eat it, and that's how we live. Like, <laughs> it's basically... <laughs> it's basically oh, that, right? You talk about spice, yes. and they're like, huh? And you're like, okay, well, you could lower the heat, and they're like, huh? That's okay. Do you try and, and teach them? It yeah. seems that all they have is gruel. Uh, okay, go ahead and make <laughs> Go ahead and make for me a uh, do you have Teeth falling out because of scurvy. <laughs> do you have proficiency with um with cooking tools? No. Okay, just make a straight uh, like wisdom roll then I'd say. Mm. Uh... <laughs> what did I roll? Because that's what it is. Twelve. Okay. The, uh, the sailors seem to be um, happy to have you kind of, you know, help out a little bit. And you show how things could be slightly different and a faster way to cook things. But there's very little you can do for the flavor. And uh, until you actually get, like, real ingredients, you're kind of hooped. And, uh, that seems to not really bother them, though. Like, you know, you regrettably tell them, yeah, this is about as good as, as it's gonna get, and they're like, eh, it does. You know, it works. Uh, that's kind of how that goes. Okay. Uh, as for the rest of you, are you getting naps as well until we fast-forward to tonight? Yeah. Okay. The evening rolls around on a fairly uneventful day. Um, people come and go throughout the halls and chit-chat and whatnot, and... Eventually, an evening of uh, similar caliber seems to start, and while you guys are kind of in your room here, um, somebody taps on the door. You can hear that there's partying going on with your neighbors. Uh, somebody raps a couple times. I'll kind of perk up. I'm not wearing my armor at this point, again, and uh, I'll head down and answer. When you open the door, you see on the other side uh, one of the party goers. He goes, Ah, it's you. Uh, care to join us? Bring your friends, perhaps? Well, I can say that they're completely and utterly broke, but I am not. So, of course. Yes, I remember that. How about just you, then? Sure, sure, I'll come in. Yeah, kind of, you know, puts his arms around your shoulder there and uh, leads you off down the hall. Uh, he goes, yeah. 
we are going to play for some uh, some higher stakes this evening. I think you might have fun. Can I incite that? Sure. I need reliability. God damn it, Disco Funk. <laughs> that 20. Uh, yeah, you can tell that um, they're going to be putting a lot more gold on the line. And uh, you also get the feeling that when he says, like, you know, oh, don't bring your friends, it's it's not that he's trying to be offensive or anything like that. He's just like, yeah, well, there's no way they're going to be able to play tonight. Well, I was trying to insight and maybe be, you, you kind of answered my question because it didn't come up. But I'm trying to insight whether or not there's something sketchy going on because ah, I might be thinking legal, like, perhaps not even illegal, more like were they conning the the room first night get your hopes up raise oh, the stakes and then you know um rob everyone blind to yeah kinda... you don't sense anything like that from this man okay cool. if there's a swindler amongst the group uh, it is not he sure okay um you eventually come back in to find that the atmosphere is quite similar and uh when you you know step up to the table people who recognize you are like hey edgar uh you know Coming to play a little bit more. In, f in it for the long haul tonight? You're tapping out early. Depends on how much of your money I take. And then uh, from across Just the table... Just kind of grin and look around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a noble woman kind of, um, you know, calls out. She's like, your uh, your friend there, is, is he coming out tonight too? And, um, you know, somebody next to her kind of nudges her. And uh, the two of them share a laugh. You know, I think he might have been waiting for you back in our room. Eh, well, she kind of, like, shrugs and then just starts putting, like, gold on the table. <laughs> I'll Fuck shrug that you. poor bastard. <laughs> Alright, guys, what's what's the ante? What's the buy-in here? Uh, we'll be starting at 10 this evening. Ah, no but problem. That's not where we'll be ending. Ah, okay. I'll put, uh, I'll put ten down. Good man. Okay. And, uh, before long, the pieces are moving across the table and everybody gets ready. Now, for the rest of you guys, evening has come around, and, uh, if you want to just, you know, sleep it off, yeah, you're more than welcome to. If you have business, then go ahead and, uh, take care of it. I have to go and talk to the kid. Wait. Uh, I suppose I would have clarified if I, if they still wanted me to talk to the captain about the dwarves. Oh, okay. Uh, so with the four there in the room, uh, what do you say to him? Edgar is already mm. off, and from the sounds coming from beyond the wall, he's off to a good start. No, I probably would have told asked him before he left. Oh, I see. What uh, would you say would you then, yeah. So, am I still asking the captain about these dwarves, or did that flop? <laughs> Well, um, I'd say it flopped. Uh, we don't really have a lead, and they're not doing much of anything. And again, it was just a suggestion. Uh, if you guys are looking for the more we know about the boat itself, obviously logic dictates the more we might have uh, some information on some leads for work. So uh, you can still talk to them if you want. Maybe there's something in it for you. But uh, personally, I... I think that there's nothing left on this boat to do other than drink, have fun, and wait until we hit land. Alright, sounds good. Alright. Okay. And uh, I'll head off. Edgar goes off. He opens the door down the hallway, and you hear uh, Edgar, and the door, you know, kind of closes. Things get muffled, and he disappears into there. Okay. And do you guys yeah. just kind of hang out in the room? Yeah. Okay, so, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Edgar parties hard, and uh, we'll do some some rolls and everything here while you guys kind of hang back. And Edgar, I'd like a roll with the plus two there, please. Ah, this is cool. Nice, fourteen. Fourteen. You win the first round. <laughs> 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 And you walk away with 50 gold. Is that including my buy-in or without it? Uh, this will always be just like net gain. So you just keep your your amount. Okay, I keep my amount and then I... Okay, so 
Holy shit balls. Okay. <laughs> and uh, somebody looks over and goes, I don't know, this fucker. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll up my uh, my sleeves of like, I have a pretty nice tunic on because I'm a noble. Somebody uh, nods like, yeah, sleeves. you keep those sleeves up, guy. <laughs> I'll put my hands up and then like double fist two beers just for show and like <laughs> laugh and drink. You see? I'm taking your money. I'm drinking. Sleeves are up. A smoke cloud explodes over in the back end of the room here, and somebody starts coughing, kind of like rolls over, and uh, you see what looks like a portly gentleman who spent much of the last time um, sleeping over here in the corner, and uh, you know he's got like a bunch of pipe tobacco, which is still burning, like he's got like little embers kind of on his clothes as he sort of rolls up and sits up at the table, and there's like a what looks to be like a broken uh, clay pipe there on, on his belly, and he kind of like looks at it, looks around, and then he goes. Uh, Oh, you guys are playing and they all just kind of like you know give him a nod and he goes shit roll me in he kind of just like leans over the table and when he puts his arms down the whole table kind of like you know <laughs> tilts in his direction ever so slightly for that brief moment at the, big papa yeah the the ocean almost you know <laughs> uh, rocks the boat in that direction uh just just luckily at that moment um, he turns over and he goes, uh, what's the buy-in? And somebody turns over and holds up, you know, ten fingers, and he says, make it fifteen. And, uh, a couple people, like, seem to back out, but a couple others decide that, oh, this is good, and come over can to I, the table. Can I insight the portly gentleman? Please do so. I'm just seeing for, uh, for sketchiness again. That, that same kind of insight I did earlier. I'm not spending Disco Funk, I'm not a charge. Um, Alright, fucking free. S of course. Okay. Um, uh, it's not that bad, it's 10. You don't know what this man's game is? Maybe after seeing him play you'll have a better idea, but uh, he's just joined the table and he spent all of <laughs> the previous time in the room passed out, so you have very little to yeah, gauge off of him. that makes sense. Okay, cool. Roll again, please. Plus two. This is for 15, so if you lose, you're losing 15. 13? Okay. He instantly wins the round there. It takes very little time, and about... Um, the, the match is, is a bit shorter than usual. Instead of the 30 minutes that normally runs, it's like 20-ish, and uh, he walks away with a big enough lead that everyone basically has to fold out. And uh, he takes it, and you lose 15 gold. Is there a role I could do while he's playing to see if I could learn any tricks from him or any strategies that he might be using? Ooh. Uh, I will let you make either an investigation... No, make an investigation roll. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use my Viet Cobb. That one. He small talks in his sort of like low gruff voice with the others there next to him, but uh, otherwise his playing seems um, pretty normal. He does, however, seem to read the table pretty well and, uh, you know, attempts at bluffing. Um, he seems to kind of just get past with ease and other times when somebody's laying down a trap, he doesn't bite and it just, you know, he, he works the table very efficiently. When he takes his stash here, which comes to about, and this is including the 15 gold you lost, all like close to 100 gold all in that one round, he just kind of like, you know, rakes it in. And, and comically enough, he has, um, what is it that they have at casinos? You know, like that, uh, like the craps table, the long stick that lets you like grab dice oh, yeah, from yeah. far away down the table? Yeah, he just, he like reaches forward, gradually takes those, and then stuffs it into a bag and then just like passes back out and he goes like, all right. Just kind of rolls back onto the couch what and lays down. Fuck face. <laughs> he just plays <laughs> one look, and goes I'll to bed. I'll look at the rest of the table like incredulous. Yeah, somebody Cause, leans cause that's over. bad manners in dice, right? To just like win and leave. You see it, uh, the gnome girl leans over and she's like, oh, he, he's just like that. You know, it's fine. All right, all right, all right. Everyone back down to 10? Hmm. <laughs> They all kind of look at each other, and, uh, let's see here. Or, 
or 20. People look over, and uh, someone says, much better idea, and uh, <laughs> starts to, like, put a bunch of gold stacks down, and everyone goes to play another. Go ahead and roll. Come on, motherfucker! You need to be the 13. Oh! Oh, no! Terrible! <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too high a roll to beat, either. Okay, um... You know, another 30 minutes goes by, uh, it's a pretty exhilarating back and forth game, um, but more so between a couple of other players, is you have a hard time really edging in, and one of them takes the pot at the end and you lose 20 gold. Fucking ball sack. I'll play one more. Okay. Uh, just making a roll here. Alright. Oh my god. Uh, oh my let's god. see here. Oh my god. I'm stressed out. <laughs> uh... Now, do you mention that this is your last round? Uh, yes. Okay. Like, whoa, that was a hard loss, guys. One more for me. Someone says, then it should be good. Uh, how about 30 for the last one? Fair enough. There are smiles around the table, and uh, some people look like they don't want to go in. And uh, you see, like, uh, most of these people seem to be just friends, but there's a couple couples, and it's almost like they're doing the, like, oh, come on, honey, don't put that much down, like, you know, and they're, like, kind of choosing who goes into They're all the... being Annabelles. <laughs> oh, right. No. They're all choosing who kind of, you know, decides to join in everything, and, uh, eventually, uh, you know, some people decide to buy in here, and let's see. I'm gonna make a roll. Okay. Um, it's not a full house, but uh, more than the number of people who are playing last time join in uh, under the guise that, you know, this is Edgar's last round, might as well, right? And uh, the, the gnome girl looking over at you, she goes, is it your last round if you win? I've never left a table with winnings. She kind of, like, gives you a look. <laughs> And, uh, after that, everybody please roll here. I'll roll for the table. Go ahead and roll yours. 30 gold, going in. I'm fucking stressed. Oh, that was a shit roll! Jank! Come on! Uh, okay, hold on. That is janked, but someone at the table has rolled a nat 20, so you need to get a 20 to win. Come on. <laughs> and if you get it, I won't say it's, like, matched. Like, you'll win. You'll beat him if you get a 20. <laughs> oh. Okay. Your last Fuck. round at the table is a failure. It's unfortunate. There have been many good plays during the evening, especially with that portly gentleman over in the corner. But this one is just sheer luck. And uh, one by one, um, you see like uh, the very obvious tells on the, the lady friend of Tid from that previous night as she, you know, draws a card and she's like, oh, this is a really good card, and like, you know, bef you know she wins that round, and then like, it's a really good dice roll, and one after the other, um, things turn in her favor, and she walks away with a pot of 150 gold, and you're down 30. Yep. It's funny, because I still have 26 gold. Hooray. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, Do you God. finish for the evening? Oh, yeah, I'm fucking... I'm just like, alright, that's enough for me. Okay. Uh, people, you know, are, are pretty happy to, to have you there. If you want, you can, you know, hang around in the room. If you want to leave and go back to your uh, your buddies and whatnot, oh. you can. Um, it's growing later and later. 100% leaving. 100% <laughs> leaving? Yeah, that would have been like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, yep. You lose a lot of money, and uh, you know, some people are still pretty jovial and, and in the game, whereas others are like... Um, Ah, oh, that's too bad, right, Edgar? You know, they they get the idea that you're not quite as high rolling as as they were, and uh, before long you leave the room. Well, with my 16, it would have felt like probably that I w I felt like I was playing a good game. It mm -hmm. was just I got outmatched by that like river card type of thing. Insane right? luck, yeah. Fuck. So you step outside. Are you actually in the hallway when Edgar steps outside? Me? No. Okay. I would have tried well i mean be stealthy about game. things yeah edgar you head down the hall and make your way to the door and uh when you step inside um i assume something's happening during the long hours of edgar's playing there 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, are you headed and knocking on the captain's door? Mm-hmm. Okay. I am going to uh, fade to black here, because I don't feel like doing uh, some ERP with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the captain will um, <clears throat> offer to take your work, but he offers you five gold. And he says, just for the evening. Hmm. I don't know if that's worth it. And you can roll insight if you want. You, you probably should roll insight. Roll insight. <laughs> you <just laughs> he might be lowballing you. Oh, well, that's oh no, help. that's a four. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got nothing for you there. Um, but the captain seems kind of like, I guess I should say matter of fact or sort of transactional. I guess, with you. Um, mm. You know, he, he takes you up on your offer, but it's it's not with that same kind of look that he gave you back when, you know, you were first getting on the ship or something like that. Yeah, nope. Not gonna happen. Five gold. He just... Uh, she's, she's a high-end hooker. Mm, he, he simply says, well, that's fine. And, uh, you know, <laughs> have, have, have a nice night, Annabelle. And, uh, you know, not even a counter-offer. <laughs> you head back to your room? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> devastating. <laughs> no, not really. She rolled a ten for 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 luck. She's a ten out of ten. Five gold. <laughs> now, now that makes me think: how many hookers could I have gotten with that with, with those winnings? <laughs> All the hookers. You should have gone yeah, back but... there with Tidge and the captain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you return back to the room and. uh... This would probably have been before Edgar came back. Your talk wouldn't have been that long. And uh, so you get back into the room there, feeling whatever, and Edgar would return later. And uh, <laughs> Edgar, your pockets have been severely lightened, but it was an incredibly enjoyable, uh, you know, few hours there. Oh, yeah. Super fun. So you guys just go and uh, sleep? I'm sleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I would like a yeah. luck roll from somebody, please. Got it. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> what? Please re-roll that. Whatever the fuck. Hey, was. No, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, it was good. oh, I didn't see. Was it a good? It, it was, was 19. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. Well, oh, that's, uh, all right. that's not bad. Oops. So you guys, let's see here. Probably about there. Uh, when you wake the next morning, um, it's the same kind of routine. You know that food's being served up top, and uh, the familiar sounds can be heard. Are you guys doing anything differently today? Sometime during the night, could I have, like, written a note that just says, I'm sorry, and, like, with a K on it, and just, like, leave it on Annabelle's bed? And then, uh, <laughs> pass back out, and then I've got nothing for the okay. next day. Okay, sure. Does anybody else have something for today? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna P-I-R-L for 30 seconds. Here, right Okay. Anybody else? Nope. Nope, I'm gonna nope. homebody it. Okay. So, getting probably to the evening, when uh, you would notice this, um, do you do anything, Annabelle, when you find the, uh, the scribbled note there on your bed? Uh, no. Okay. And... I would ask Billy here if he wanted to gamble more, but we'll do another night. Somebody roll luck, please. Getting close to the end of your destination. Uh, I'll take this one. Boy. No boy, no. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry. So bad I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Uh, it was an uneventful oh, okay. day. Uh, having gotten some good wins, uh, the captain informs you guys on this next day as you're gathering up top to get your very basic food that the, uh, the journey will be done uh, in about two days tops. Uh, three if something goes catastrophically wrong. But uh, by two days from now, you should be in the capital and 
and he's guessing it'll be one day and then maybe a half day of travel. I would just, um, if we're fast forwarding, I would just try to see if there were any low stakes games happening. Um, oh, like five coin buy ins, just see if sure. I could win some money back. But other than that, you know, okay. I would say for sure that there would be a, a couple evenings. Um, well, not so much evenings. They tend to go hard in the evenings, but a couple of uh, like middle of the day games that they play. Um, and uh, you could join in on those if you want to play one. Yeah, go for, for sure. It. So five gold. Holy figgity no. fuck. <laughs> no. I didn't want to play. You were certainly played, son. Uh, ten. Yeah, I rolled, uh, 20. <laughs> of course. So you lose the 5 there. Do you want to play another? Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, what a shit fucking roll. Um, that's a 13. You lose another 5. I'll play one more. <laughs> Last one, here we go. Alright. For all the models. Uh, 7. Uh... The number to beat was 16. Okay. Well, I've gone from 91 gold to 11. <laughs> you still have the pearl. Well, fair <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. Okay. The last little bit of the journey here, unless you guys have something, do you want to <clears throat> fast travel it here? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Please. Two more days go by until the, uh, the party ship gradually pulls into Horus Ren. And sure enough, it's during the middle of uh, the afternoon when the sun is high in the sky and there's some sort of uh, light clouds appearing that you see the capital. And it's a magnificent city, an, an old thing of uh, like huge uh, stone walls made of like uh, bleached stone and the port is filled with these impressive warships that would make even the large vessel that you're on look like nothing. And as you guys pull into there, you eventually uh, find a pier while there are uh, um, a bunch of guards that kind of come running down and do some chatting with the captain and everything, and people begin to disembark. And since everybody is sort of gathered up at the top there, um, there are some goodbyes. There's none with the dwarves. They simply just, you know, walk past everybody and, and head off and, you know, down the plank and into the city. And the, the party goers, though, you know, they're all very cordial with you. Um, Melissa, you know, gives you a, a wave and a wink and, and says, uh, you know, see me any time, Tidge, if you uh, if you want. And uh, kind of just heads down the plank there and goes off immediately. And others, you know, come up to you guys. Thank you for the games. Um, you know, some of them are like, ah, tough luck, Edgar, right? You know, having clearly seen how things went. And... Uh, Certain members of the crew are uh, not like the crew, like the sailors, but of the party um, are definitely feeling the same thing where they s suffered some losses. And <laughs> others are like riding on cloud nine, like do 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 do, uh, you know, backpacks full of money, binders full of women, and, uh, you know, off the way they go. Do you guys do anything before heading off the ship? I don't have anything to do. Okay. Nope. Well, I'm just gonna gather my stuff and. Well, uh, I, sh I guess I should probably, but I'm not even gonna take care of the mattress. They can do that. <laughs> the uh, the captain will say one thing though. He will find you at one point, Edgar, before you leave, and go. Uh, hey, good luck out there. You as well. Let's hope that uh, we both avoid some. Let's just say some confrontations with our respective nobles, eh? Yeah, he gives you a nod. Now, are you feeling um, bummed at all? Are you visibly like bummed about having lost? So no, much money? no, not at all. Like okay. I would have been bummed that night, but like to me, it was. I came in with. Um, came in with, with nothing. Thirty left gold. With nothing. It's a good yeah, time. exactly. It's you know, it, there's almost no net change after the fact, except I have a hundred dollar pearl and someone <laughs> owes me fifteen gold. So if anything, I'm up. Okay. He, uh, you know, gives you a pat on the shoulder, mm -hmm. and I uh, says, Hey, well, check the ports. Maybe you'll see me again sometime. Absolutely. Until next time. Tips his, uh, his 
hat towards you, steps back onto the ship, and you guys walk into Oris Ren, the capital of the Aurelian Empire. It's a massive city, and the port up ahead is filled with people busily moving from one place to another. If you guys are looking to find work, this is probably the place. <clears throat> yeah. Well, kids, it's your expedition, your librarian. Any word from him? I know he's probably wanting us to head over there immediately, but if Kalik and Annabelle aren't able to eat, I don't know what we can possibly do. Well, he said that haste is important, but I'm, um, I haven't chatted with him in a little bit, but I can give him a buzz. There's a couple things I have to take care of here in the city anyways, so... I'd like to know at least what we're walking into, so I'd like to stop by the library and see if we can find a little more information. Ah. And then I have another personal errand to run. <laughs> okay. I... And... Oh, yeah, what's up? Oh, I was just gonna say, and also... I'll... I'll give him a... I'll give him a jingle, see if I can chat with him a bit. I would like a luck roll from you, please, Tidge. But of course. Is that good enough? At some point while you're uh, you're chatting here with Edgar, um, you know, your party is standing on the pier where there's <coughs> all these different ships and you can see the very busy city like way down the, uh, on the walk. And kind of cross your arms for a second and lean backwards and you feel something strange and um, you kind of bump against what feels like a sack of coins in your back pocket alright uh, I will reach back and <coughs> see if or try and confirm my suspicions as you reach back your hand touches on what feels like a, a bag of, like, red velvet or something like that. Like, it's really smooth. It's nothing like the little leather bags that you use to carry stuff. And you can feel coin within it. You can add to your inventory 20 gold coins. From the gout. From the girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, we will end the session there. Ooh, interesting. Woohoo. I'm so broke. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, as far as you know. <laughs> Doesn't even pay Arillo back. Just like, nope, that's a secret. <laughs> just like runs back on the ship. I want to play another round. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Huh? Wait. Yeah, no, we're done. I'm just thinking about that contract. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. Do do we have to share our debts too? I don't know. That might be a good thing to talk uh, table talk. But we're going to end this session here. Uh, players, I had a blast. I hope you guys did. Uh, I think you played beautifully uh, to the audience. Always good to have you. And to any uh, patrons and, and people with biddies out there, you're the reasons we get to do this. So thank you very much. We have one more session tomorrow for the week, and then it's a week off after that. So, uh, you know, tune in if you want to see some more stuff. Otherwise, adios. Ciao. Bye. Uh, see you. Bye. -bye.